Block 5. My guests of honor don't prepare to leave, right Tilda? I shivered from hearing the least wanted voice. U.M. Majesty. Don't worry, we are. Discussing. How to leave Tilda. Not going to work Tilda. He smiled, and we all felt despair. In the first hour the events were too rapid, and we were too busy to leave. With the king's prompting, the nobles started talking to us, and thus stalling our preparations. Only one person was having fun. I can't believe it was an entire year since we last met Tilda. Engie was making the poor queen shiver in terror. However, she couldn't be used this time, since all of the noble ladies were warned about her. New Jersey's expression was dark, especially after seeing that under every skirt there are pants. She could have pulled a dress off a woman to take a photo of her breasts, but even for her it would be too much. Report ready. Yeah, Wisconsin, everything's green. We Missouri, I'm ready. Start Casablanca in 3, 2, 1. Yeah, the three of us suddenly stopped doing whatever we were doing, and we all headed to the main table, where the king resided. We approached from multiple angles, and the guards couldn't stop us all in time. Whiskey was stopped, so was Iowa. I climbed on the table, and pulled off my magic dress, to reveal what is hidden underneath. I am a bunny girl, let's dance. Let's dance Tilda. I am bunny girl. Don't be shy and party hard Tilda. The night is still so young, so let's all get drunk and party hard Tilda. I started dancing, while Whiskey turned on the rock. The gathering is crashed, and I'm sure in due time we will be thrown outside Tilda. Spoiler what would have happened if the others made it to the table? Iowa starts to sing the worst anime opening she could find without any prior preparations and any talent. New Jersey, starts retelling what underwear she saw at the last year's party, with the personification of where she found it. Wisconsin, takes out a guitar, and plays heavy metal, completely ruining the music and the orchestra's ears. Collapse, V3CH42, subjugating the sea dragon as I set sail towards the monster's last encounter location. The seagulls started returning. Are we really going towards that snake? P. Do we have options? We are almost out of fuel, and I doubt that we would make it back home without killing that monster. If that huge storm was caused to drive the monster away from us, then it would mean we will have a very hard way home. Ping. Here it comes. When you run out of coal, please tell me. We will go and slay that thing with our swords. I glanced at my warmongering comrade, and teared, let's hope everything will be alright. Ping. I carefully monitored the state on the sonar. I quickly established the bearing and estimated the range. Ping 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 pom pom the depth charge throw us fired. And I started bombing the creature from a safe distance. Boom boom right after the first batch of charges, the creature surfaced and shrieked in fury. Ra Bang 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 the shells hit the monster, and shell-shocked creature stopped for a while. Bang 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 while the creature was remaining still, I managed to hit its head. Ra the explosions of 127 mm he shells managed to hurt the monster. It immediately dived, and disappeared in the abyss. Ping ping pom pom ping boom boom ping. After a series of depth charge bombings, the creature suddenly stopped moving underwater, barely producing any noises. It will surely be bad, if I let the monster up here from underneath me, while I am unloading the stern rails. The last thing I would want now, is letting this bastard jump like a shark, and capture me. Pom pom ping. Ping ping I heard the charges hitting the water, and slowly descending. The fuses were at their limit, and I still wondered if any would reach the monster. Boom boom the explosions were somewhat close. And I continued pounding the monster. Boom 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 ping the creature started moving again. Ping 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 splash it surfaced, and a trail of blood followed it from the abyss. Both of its eyes were closed, and it was spewing fire around itself. Without any idea where it was hitting. Bang 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 the more I shelled the monster the more sluggish it was becoming. Bang bang. What? 
One of the guns ceased firing, and I had a deja vu that I am about to explode. Click. Click 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 what? Why are we stopping? P. What do you think? End of the line. Warning. Autonomy reached zero. Cannot use any speed aside dead slow ahead is this the end? P. What? Were you not the one who said we'll charge it with our swords? Where did that bravado go? Fine. Bring me closer, so I can hit it with my sword. Patricia Zelan was restored, and I swiftly picked her up in a princess carry, and jumped off. Unlike the ship, I was not restricted in my speed. It tries to look at the ship, since it produces a lot of noise. Maybe it will be fooled, if I send the ship to another side. I pincered the monster, and drew the katana. Ping as we approached, I leapt and threw Patricia somewhere on the monster, while I pierced it and used the sword and myself as an awl. The scales easily withstood the combined speed and mass of my attack, not suffering anything but a scratch. I aimed again, and tried to pierce it between the scales. Ping this time it was a small wound. Still far away from being able to pierce the creature properly. Patricia too was having a nice time. She was slashing and chopping the dragon, without doing anything but scratches to its green scales. Suddenly I thought about using the evasion to cheese the world in the physics. I tried upscaling the evasion, both with the skills and the luck, and then I tried evading through the monster. I did it again and again, and again, splash until something huge fell into the water, and the monster's body started sinking. I looked at what fell, and started screaming in confusion. On top of the monster's severed head was standing Patricia. Are you done here? Let's go back. I'm tired. P. And she was the one who called me physics R. Uh, V3CH43. Decayed splendor after we defeated the monster. I picked up the stranded Patricia, and carried her in my arms. Our destination was not the ship, since we would be moving at a ridiculous speed of three knots. Since I, Avatar, can move at full speed, I decided to move straight back to Eureka. My current headache is figuring out what we are going to do about the lack of fuel, and what I am going to be asking from Eureka. Those gods and their damn answers. When we finally arrived to the island, crawled through the jungles, climbed the mountain, and arrived to Eureka's house, Patricia and I finally collapsed of exhaustion. The door opened, and Eureka looked at us. The children reported everything. I am glad to have everything done. Good job, you two. Come inside when you can. Why? I mustered the remaining strength and carried Patricia inside. Yuriko didn't care about us ignoring all of the etiquette and lying down on her carpet. The money is of gold but the agreement is of platinum. Ask away what you want. She poured us some herbal tea. I lifted myself off the floor, and managed to put my head on the table. Before we begin, can you tell me why you keep calling the seagulls children? Or you're doing it with everybody? Her children this, children that, starts to rub me the wrong way. Ara, they are indeed my children. I have mentioned that I am the guardian of the seas. A long time ago I was showered with prayers, venerated by all people connected to the sea. I was full of divine power, and so I created the children. Why, am I right that their purpose is to make sure nobody gets hurt in storms? Not exactly. Yuriko shrugged her shoulders, as if she was not sure herself. I made them to control the weather, when the world was still malleable and young. Then, the world started working as intended and the children turned into my messengers. They were doing what they wanted, including helping the people. Eons were passing, and as the science made progress, I was forgotten. With every century I was becoming weaker, as was the faith in me. Now. I'm only a shadow of my former self, and those children are all that is left. I made myself tear a bit, just to comfort Yuriko. Patricia stared at us, barely understanding what is going on. So, you are now completely useless? After I blurted that, a vein popped on Yuriko's forehead. Watch your tongue, doll, I still have enough strength to fight you. Be happy I am respectful, unlike my peers. Why, well, 
My question is asked. It's Patricia's turn. I prompted the lying girl. What's your use to us? We both stared at Patricia. I wondered if Eureka would even do anything useful to us, so I didn't rise my hopes of her. I'm old enough to be wise, and young enough to fight. Would anything else be important, child? Why, I expected Eureka to be a bit more angry. However, she answered calmly, can you actually fight? We two are capable of using swords, and I have a strong ship. What is your forte then? Yuriko did not answer, she just stood up and entered a room. I heard some rustling and noise, and a few minutes later Yuriko returned with something wrapped in decayed cloth. She put the object on the table, and some of the decayed linen dropped on the floor and the table. The object was long and straight, albeit for now I had no idea what is inside. Yuriko started gently unwrapping the object and immediately the pieces of cloth started tearing off and falling apart. Under the wraps was a wooden scabbard covered in oil and grease. I felt an urge to touch it but stopped my hand before it reached the wood. I glanced at Yuriko, waiting for her consent. After the woman lightly nodded, I took the scabbard. It was completely plain rectangular wooden case with a thin line separating the handle and the scabbard. Clay rack inside of it was a long double edged sword. It was rusty, and lost its sharpness. Ara. I thought the oil would preserve it? Eureka was surprised, but I immediately grasped why it is like that. How many centuries ago have you conserved it? The woman glanced aside and answered in embarrassment. I think. Two thousand years ago? Now I was not surprised it looks like this. A Jaruki extracted from soil would be in similar condition. Sierra's doing miracles to one's health, and metal's condition. As a warrior, you might be a complete failure. Now, what about your wisdom? I taunted the cornered woman. What do you want? Why, come with me. You and the seagulls might help us cross the ocean, if you are still useful. After Yuriko gritted her teeth. She pulled the rusted Jaruki out of my hands, and started packing her belongings. V3CH44 The North and the West By the time Yuriko finished packing her stuff, it was already morning. We had some sleep, and headed to the port. Ara, this place is in a bit worse condition, than I expected. Why, the ship was tortured for the entire duration of our traveling. I have no idea how the boilers were fueled to let the ship continue traveling, even though it is clearly out of fuel. Maybe the ship was burning its deck? There should be a lot of wood to burn. While it was certainly a wonderful question, I had a more important concern. That is, how are we supposed to move now? Entering port, abandoned refuel and repair, to gold scammers. It was one gold. I bought it. I'm out of options. Since there was an opportunity to enhance myself, I carried Patricia and Eureka to the ship, and while they were accommodating themselves, I checked the stats. Ding you received two copper coins, one silver coin, twenty-two gold coins, three forty-two upgrade points IJN Kirin Army, DDL. Upgrade points, two. Torpedoes, 06 HP, 3700 High minus 100% AU minus 100% 3000 nanometers 5 dual turrets full upgrade 19 dual torpedo mount Prototype oxygen, high explosive Increase caliber, 0 100 improve mounts 0 250 improve propulsion, 0 500 the silent ship started vibrating, as the steam turbines were empowered by high pressure steam. Seeing that the ship came back to life, the seagulls took off and started circling around the bow. While I was silently cursing them for having to follow their directions again, I set course to the northwest. When the course was set, I searched for Eureka. She was sitting in one of the cabins, and drinking tea. Around her were lying the wooden scabbard, the Jarugi and a bunch of sharpening stones. You think this thing can be saved? Of course it can be. It is only rust. Give me a couple of days, and my sword shall be as sharp as it was when it was forged. 
I decided to omit the fact that the swords are forged dull and are sharpened afterwards, if you say so, do you happen to know why the seagulls want me to go where they are guiding me to? At the edge of the world lies the remnant of alien world, perhaps they deem you suitable for it. Yuriko didn't care much, and gave a half-hearted answer. Oh, great one, share thee wisdom with me. The way of the sword is a hard one, some are apt for it, while the others have to work hard just to be able to learn their first skill. That child is the latter. Why, do you happen to know some skills? Ara, suddenly you became so curious. Dol Tilda, maybe later, when I have the sword sharpened. She dismissed me, and returned to work. If I learned those fancy sword skills, maybe I would be able to fight Veronica. The doors opened, and a girl in a white uniform with aiguillettes entered. Veronica, you are just in time. The doge paid her a glance, before returning his sight to the port. The recently commissioned ships were lined up and ready. The might of the Republic was once again unchallengeable. Signora di Benizio. I happen to have the most outstanding of news. The other person in this cabinet, the Chancellor, drew the girl's attention to himself. Oh my Tilda, I am all ears. The girl chirped, even though her mood was at the lowest. The blockade runners managed to bring not only the Western goods but also a Western trade attaché. With this, our goal of establishing long-lasting relations with the West is almost reached. The Chancellor was ecstatic. Ever since its first contact with the West, Benizio was aiming for diplomatic relations. The West possesses ships that can sail again the winds and currents, as well as muskets that could fire further than 200 steps with deadly accuracy. That is the most excellent of news. Father, the new battleship was finished. The crew is working hard to master this marvel of technology. As soon as it is ready, Mo. That woman will be of no threat. Veronica gulped, as she almost said the second most forbidden word in this palace. Good. Even though the doge's answer was curt, he was the most pleased. Veronica bowed, and prepared to leave. Now, or never. Yes, I shall. For your splendor. Signora di Benizio? The Chancellor asked the girl, after she started incoherently mumbling Ka? The doge gasped, as his chest was pierced by the rapier. What? The Chancellor fell down, shocked from seeing the obnoxious scene. The most loyal retainer of the doge has turned her blade against him. The rabid dog of Di Benizio family has finally turned her sight to her flesh and blood. Some people would say it is expected, some would wonder why. The doge is dead. Long live the doge. The girl turned around, covered in blood. The chancellor shivered in terror, after he saw her eyes, akin to those of a dead fish. T the dd doge is dd dead. LLL long LL live the d doge. The senile man knew well of the rumors concerning the first daughter, the radiant son. His life depended on him being pleasing to her. The doge was assassinated, by the western agent. The Westerner is to be expulsed, and returned to the West on the very first ship. All who deal with the West are to be sunk on sight, if they come from beyond the sea. The Chancellor trembled. Everything Di Benizio family worked for for the past centuries was turned to dust. The temporary ruler's orders were executed the same day. Four sisters no twenty-six. Mo and I were sunbathing by the pool. Everything was prepared, the deck shares the lemonade, and the warm sunlight. We only needed to hang out and relax. Slurp too bad the others got lovey-dovey today. Mo, I already feel like the Dean will be begging us to stop the mayhem that is about to occur. It didn't actually matter, since Whiskey will calm down after beating the sea out of New Jersey. Slurp I really love it when I can just lie down and relax. There are no lessons, no homework checking, no gatherings and parties and no noise. Slurp only the two of us were noisy here but it is alright. Slam the gate opened, and somebody entered the pool area. Finally, why do I have to search for you? Couldn't you be somewhere close, so I would not have to waste my precious time searching for you? 
I turned round and saw the newcomer girl with a couple more girls in tow. I sighed, and turned my eyes to Mo. My silent plea was confirmed immediately. What? You've got any problems? Mo, yes, I do. CPF, then go earthly. Yourself. We're resting. Mo, first, I want that vixen to stop approaching my husband. CPF, Mo turned to me with a smirk. Big sis Tilda? Mo, it is. Misunderstanding. Don't you worry, I'll always support you Tilda. Ha, huh. the fiancé did not quit bothering us. I challenge you to a duel. CPF, I had to turn around again, and stare at this bothersome girl. Meanwhile, Mo was trying not to laugh. The fiancé's entourage was pale but did not explain why this is a bad idea. Are you sure? Yes. CPF, well. Big sis, don't waste MK7's rifling on this one. Ma deuce will be more than enough. I followed Mo's advice and aimed there. 50 calories. Wait, what are you doing? The fiancé was confused. Were you not challenging me to a duel? I was, but I challenge you to a culinary duel. Seriously? We went to the culinary class. Everyone, except for Missouri. Sunday is a sacred day, and she will be moving out of the pool only if we set up another one here. The ingredients were already put on two of the tables. We will be making cakes. The cake which my husband likes more will be the winner. CPF, what would happen if you win? Then you will be forbidden to approach my husband. CPF, and if you lose? Then, nothing. Why would I concede to someone like you? I facepamed, and what's the point then? The point is to once again confirm that I am infallible. I facepamed again. While the two of us were discussing the terms and conditions of this contest, one of the entourage girls approached me and whispered, Miss Iwa, Her Highness must win. Otherwise her father will make your life much harder. Let him try. Of course. There is an option to deliberately lose and let this girl have the victory, however, both my pride as the best cook and big sister, as well as the Iowa class pride, are at stake. Right after the contest began, I smiled bitterly. I approached the fiancé's table and stood behind her. Then I grabbed her hands with mine. Look, you must crack the eggs like this. Don't pour all of the flour at once. Keep mixing it like this. Good. You're making good progress. Now, let it rest. Uh, are you not going to cook yourself? After the fiancé reminded me, I trembled. I was too focused on saving this rookie, that I forgot about my own cake. Of course, the cake would only be finished a bit later. But I am happy that the contest itself will not be a once-sided massacre with my ultimate cooking on one side and a pile of burned mash on the other. While I was making my own pastry, the fiancé timidly asked me, H how do I bake it now? CPF, F first, please pour the dough out of the bowl. You don't want to be baking in the bowl itself. Now, put it here, and close the door. Every five minutes check the condition of the cake. Don't forget, it should have a nice brown tint but don't make it too dark. It should be like New Jersey's hair. The fiancé nodded, and I returned to my station. Is it ready? CPF, I looked. Not yet. A few minutes later I finally finished with the dough. Is it ready? CPF, I looked. Not yet. I finally put the cake in the oven, and approached the fiancé's oven. I took a look inside. My my, somebody, pass me potholders. The cake was almost burnt. Luckily, it is almost, not completely. Don't worry, it is still in acceptable condition. I soothed their rookie chef. I just checked my cake, and when I turned around, I saw how the fiancé started decorating her own. It was a disaster. I once again started guiding her hands. Do it like this. Don't worry. The cream can be spread out later. Focus on making it somewhat evenly distributed. Now, let's make a small cream rose. Relax your hands and watch how Big Sis is doing it. Now try it yourself. Good, just like this. Good girl Tilda. I am sure the prince will be happy to eat such a pretty cake Tilda. 
I made it in time to take out my cake, and decorated it. The two cakes were not on the plates, and the fiancé was in tears. I. Is it fine to show my cake to my husband? CPF, don't worry Tilda. You just need to give him the cake, I am sure he will like it Tilda. T thanks, big sis. The fiancé took her cake, and ran off. You foo foo Tilda, Mo must still be by the pool. At the pool. Oh. You're done? How's it? Oh, cake Tilda. Mo, have a piece Tilda. Thanks a lot Tilda. How did the duel go? Mo, wait, I completely forgot. Meanwhile, T take this, you dummy. I. I just happened to go past a patisserie. CPF, oh, cake? CP, what? Is it all that you are going to say? CPF, thank you very much Tilda. CP, I just gave it to you. I don't need your thanks. CPF, uh, understood, I will be going then. CP, are you not going to invite me for a cup of tea? CPF, of course, let's go then. CP, dummy. CPF, V3CH45. The cold ice desert our sailing to the north continued for an entire week. The further we pierced into the unsurveyed cold waters, the more ice we were encountering. With every passing mile, the chunks of ice were becoming larger and larger. So was the layer of frozen water on the ship. The gun barrels were decorated with long icicles, and the deck was as slippery as if it was covered in oil. The inhabitants of the ship were barely leaving the insides. Only the brave seagulls pretended not to care about the frozen air, even though more than half of them were sitting by the second torpedo mount and trying to warm each other. Just who would be so crazy, so as to travel this deep into the Arctic? I wondered if Yuriko has any idea. The last time I heard of what is going on in the bigger world was. You can guess how long ago. Seeing that she has no idea, I shifted my gaze to Patricia. The north is cold, barren, and only polar bears and seals live here. Nobody cares about those waters, not to mention that nobody even tries to sail here. It makes no sense to waste time here. P. While the sun was approaching the horizon, I accepted the fact that this might be a useless trip. In the morning I was woken up by Yuriko. The woman was in the same worn-out kimono, which was patched more than once, however. Her shoulder was now decorated with a polished jarugi. If somebody said that it can be restored, I would have laughed. Wake up faster, doll. My time is precious, so is my will. I wondered what she is talking about but I obediently followed her, until we went outside of the ship. The ship was coated in morning fog. Though my skills may be rusty, I can teach you some moves. You once asked me if I know some skills, so here I am. Have you forgotten your own request? I smiled apologetically, and immediately followed her to the bow. The deck there was somewhat free, unlike in other places. Yuriko looked rusty indeed. She was sluggish and frequently had her strikes done wrong. Not that it helps me, instead of an assured victory against her. I was beaten again and again. The awkward moves were quickly turning into precise strikes, as the muscle memory was awakening from slumber. From slumber was as well awakening Yuriko herself. From the sidelines I was hearing Patricia's murmurs, as she appraised our skills. You have potential, doll. Now, I wish to see what this child is capable of. Without saying a word Patricia drew her sword and took a stance. The European stance somewhat surprised Yuriko but the fight was as one-sided, as was mine. So, Yuriko, how am I? Patricia played her muscles for a bit. Weak. You both are weak. Should an actually capable opponent appear, you both are doomed. Why? While both of us were coming up with excuses and retorts, Bum screeched the entire ship shook, and stopped. The three of us bent over the bow railings, and silently screamed. We hit a huge mass of ice, and all the way forward was ice. Even a nuclear icebreaker would get stuck here, or so I thought. Stats, stats, stats. Ding warning. Hull integrity at critical level. Warning. Multiple hull breaches detected. 
Warning. Hull breaches below the waterline. Warning. 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 IJN Kirin Army, DDL. Upgrade points, 2. Torpedoes, 06. HP, 1595. High minus 11%. Sinking imminent. AU minus 58%. 1741 nanometers. For a couple of minutes we stood still, fearing to move even a muscle. The sinking gauge was not filling, so I hoped we actually got stuck and are not going down. The only sound we were hearing was the sound of seagulls cawing above. We exchanged glances, and without saying a word headed to pick up some things. We will surely sink, if we try to move the ship. So we will be continuing on foot. Nobody mentioned their opinion of what has happened. Nobody said a word, as if there was nothing worth mentioning. We only followed the seagulls, as they led us deeper into the glacier. Soon, the ice field started rising, and we reached a frozen island, where we finally let ourselves rest for a bit. I wish we could light a fire here. P. This place is too barren to even have a single branch. We can be burning the clothes but I doubt any of you is desperate enough for this. Why, even though we were talking, and sometimes laughing, nobody said a single word about the shipwreck since nothing has happened. Nothing at all. V3CH46. At the world's end we were following the seagulls deeper into the glacier. Aside from a few frozen islands where the ice was only a meter thick, the rest of the surroundings were a flat ice surface with occasional spikes and trenches. Both Patricia and I have already lost our confidence that anything can be found in those deserted ices. The last discovery of a man-made object was three days ago, when we found an old whaleboat stuck in the ice. With every step my compass was behaving weirder. Up to the point when the arrow did a complete 360 without the compass being moved anywhere. Patricia, did anybody ever try to reach the North Pole? Why? P. As an achievement, for example? Nobody gives a damn about this godforsaken place. There were barbarian tribes to the north of Benizio but even they did not sail past the first ice fields. Benizio too had nothing to waste here, since the merchant ships would sink from icebergs, and there are no notable trading ports or settlements here. I shifted my attention to Yuriko, since she might know why. Instead of answering. She beckoned us to keep moving and continued forward. I tried a few times more but she remained silent about the north. Maybe there is an alien base? I already imagined the space destroyer Curan army. Tilda, while I was wondering what kind of a treasure we will find at the destination, the early warning radar picked up a couple of signals. The signals were quite large, and flew towards us at high speed. When they entered the visual range, I saw that those were a couple of wyverns. Bang 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 the 127mm shells flew right towards the monsters but the attack was evaded. I desperately wanted to avoid the wyverns entering the machine gun range. My AA might consists only of the main guns and the 13mm machine guns would barely help. Bang 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 after 15 shots I scored a good hit on the wyverns, shooting them down from the sky. They were still alive, however, I did not waste ammo on them anymore. I incapacitated them, so they won't be a threat. Not bad. Yuriko finally started talking. Then. I am not answering. My petty attempt was prevented immediately. At least can you say if you know what is there? I have no idea. She said it monotonously, making me suspect that she actually knows. Try better, doll. I bear no interest what those children found there. It is their discovery, and they decided it might be of use to you. I mentally smirked, and prepared to pull the answers out of Yuriko since she loosened up. Why is my compass behaving weirdly? I showed a pocket compass, the branch of my ship compass. Its arrow immediately did another 360 no scope. For the same reason nobody sails north. My face twitched, and I forced myself to smile, to cover for my annoyed expression. We continued walking, and a day later we reached a mountain range. The seagulls were still pointing there 
so I continued walking until we reached the land. The land soon turned into a gentle slope, which later became a mountain. We were climbing further and further. Patricia gently refused my assistance by saying go to hell, I am no damsel in distress. On the other hand, Eureka shamelessly clung to my back, and was only concerned with maintaining grip to a two heads lower cat girl. It took me two hours of climbing to reach the top, where the seagulls were already waiting. Little bastards. Patricia climbed an hour later. The fatigue was so clear, that she didn't even try to pretend to be strong. She just lied down on the ice. Show cowed. Show hood. P. I sighed, and started exploring, until I reached an end of the cliff, and then I looked down. Jesus Christ. What is that supposed to be? Eureka approached me, and stood beside me. She breathed in the cold mountain air, and with a dignified expression said, Here is the end of the world, one of the four ends. Following her words, I looked into the black abyss below, and out of curiosity I threw a stone there. I pricked up my ears, and listened. One minute, three, five, ten. There was no sound, the stone just fell into nothing. Wow. Okay, let's look around. Pong just as I stepped away from the edge, I heard the ring of the stone reaching the bottom. Please, remind me not to fall there. Yuriko nodded, and we started searching. V3CH47. The treasures covered in ice the search was mostly conducted by myself. Patricia was still lying down with her tongue on her side, and Yuriko was mostly making an appearance of activity. I was barely making any progress, and only after I cleared all of the surrounding area of snow I managed to understand that I would have to dig deeper into the ice capes. I used the katana as a mean of breaking the ice. It was an ungrateful work but the results showed up immediately. There was something deep in the ice. I frantically bashed the ice, until I dug out a curved scabbard. It was mostly made of wood, and had golden engravings around it. As I unsheathed the contents, a snow-white Damascus steel blade showed up. The total size of the white katana was similar to the one I use now. I swung it for a few times, and immediately grasped that it is both lighter, and easier to handle. Who would have thought? My ears perked, as I heard Yuriko's murmurs. What? Nothing to be concerned with, doll. Why? It looks to me that you perfectly know what this is. Otherwise, would she not be surprised? It is a blade made of divine steel. Try cutting that stone, and you will see the answer for yourself. I followed her advice and aimed at a large boulder. Slash the blade easily cut through the rock. Without having any difficulties, only the clear cut remained. I immediately checked the blade but saw no damage. Fits like a glove. Now Eureka was really amazed. Hey, Eureka. How strong is this blade? Can it cut through steel? Through steel? Don't make me laugh, doll. It cuts through anything that is not made of divine steel. I grinned like a child who received the newest and coolest toy. I am this child but. Now then, let's go Tilda. I headed to pick up Patricia who was lying in a pool of melted ice. The new katana will be going with me but I will not be using it until I actually meet something worthy of its cutting abilities. I carried the girls down the mountain, and when we were at the bottom, I asked the seagulls to take us to the ship. If I chip the deck off the ship, and freeze it, I might make a pike reed patch and make it to a port. The seagulls immediately swarmed around us, and started leading the way. We were heading back into the frozen sea. For a day we were not seeing anything but ice, even though on our way were small islands. We breathed out in relief only when we saw a couple of them. On day two we saw something on the horizon. It appeared to be a mast of one of the entombed whale boats. While it is an hospitable place, at least frozen wood is more comfortable than the ice. Coincidentally, the seagulls were leading us right there. When we got closer to the ship, I saw that it is more of a cargo ship. It was a steam-powered transport of 1940s. It had two high masts closer to the bow and stern, and a large superstructure in the middle. 
In front of the superstructure were several cranes. I hurried to survey the entombed vessel. It was clearly stuck in the ice and had no way of freeing itself. Moreover, it was not an icebreaker, it still had to sail at least for a day before it would reach open waters. Some of its hull appeared to be rusty, the paint had already fallen off. It was abandoned decades ago, the deck was empty, and only the machinery remained. All in all, the ship was in good condition, and as long as it is freed, it will sail with no issues whatsoever. Its hull is sturdy, and it can be cut to become the patches for my ship. The equipment too is in working condition. Maybe if I tie my ship to this one, we may even be able to move. I checked the contents of the hold and was surprised. The hold was filled with steel sheets, steel beams, wooden planks, steam boilers, ammunition, shells, equipment. I may be able to build a ship or two just out of these materials. Behind the superstructure there was an oil tank, fully filled with fuel for ships. As I was checking the superstructure, I was even more surprised. The desolate outside of the ship was contrasting with the insides, which appeared like the ship is not abandoned at all. Only people were not here. Finally, I entered the bridge. Everything there was in pristine condition. All of the equipment reacted to the control inputs. I tried to give the command to start the engines, and hoped that she will break out of the ice. Then we might be able to do something. Don't dry. The ship is completely stuck. I turned around in shock, and saw a girl dressed like a nurse. Four sisters no twenty-seven. Oh, you jest Tilda. But it is the truth, Miss Tilda. Ha ha Tilda. Miss is too humble. Isn't she Tilda? You foo foo, the humblest ones are always the ones who surprise Tilda. Aha aha, I am most honored to hear it from the ladies Tilda. I felt like veins popped on my head. I have no idea how I ended up in this sugary hell where ladies go through the tea assortment. I have no idea how I ever ended up being invited here. I have no idea how the heck I survived this place so far. Slurp just a single noise, and the entire bowmen turned their heads at me. Don't mind me. I'm just drinking. I am a fish out of the water. I am a black sheep in wolf's belt. I am a white collar between a shift of coal miners. I am American in English club. I am an otaku in the middle of tea party. From all of the sides I was receiving mocking glances, and murmurs where I was laughed at with the most innocent of smiles. Even all of that is not an issue. The issue is that I were promised to turn me into the next practice target of the entire battleship force if I do anything inappropriate. Oh my, to think that the refined lady like Miss Iowa would have such a cubbish sister. Where did your hubris go, teacher? The prince's wife who was super happy that I am on the leash. Sip as if in opposition to my noisy drinking, I would gracefully sip the tea, earning admiration of the ladies. Of course, I can sink my sister at any given time especially because I know that she spent the entire night learning how to behave, however, why would I? My silly big sister is having so much fun here. Tilda, I may as well put this cutie pie into my pocket, and hide her from the rest of the world. Tilda, kihi Tilda. What's she laughing at? Random lady one, just ignore her. Yeah, I guess the recent Yan dear galge had some effect on me. Tilda, kihi Tilda. She is making me shiver. Random lady 2, just what a sinister plan does she prepare? Random lady 3, Iowa silently shifted her seat closer to me, and hit my side with her elbow. Be a bit quieter, please, don't spoil this one. Yeah, I may not be enjoying these stupid drink tea and gossip parties but I am behaving myself, better than usually, only because it's I's request. She is trying to be everyone's big sis, even though she's good for nothing even to us. I is struggling to keep good relations with everybody, and this naughty babe in pink pants, confirmed five minutes ago, is the only one right now who is not adoring my silly sister. It's not too big of a price, if I rot here for a while. I was so surprised to hear that your highness not only has perfect etiquette, but also is capable confectioner. Random Lady 4. 
Of course Tilda. I am perfect after all Tilda. The girl was bathing in compliments and flattery. Meanwhile, a pretty maid approached. My hand automatically stretched out towards her skirt but stopped an inch away. I was A's were conveying one simple message. I will kill you. The skirt's contents remained secret for now. The maid was pouring the tea to the ladies, and of course she stopped by my seat too. I did not dare touching her, for obvious reasons. However, I accidentally dropped the spoon and the girl caught it mid-flight, carelessly showing the treasure. Under Iowa's strict glare I proceeded with the tea. The evening ended after the ladies finished two more teapots, and only then I was free to act. Cutie Tilda. Lift up your skirt Tilda. I approached the maid, the girl blushed, and obediently lifted the skirt to the level where I could clearly see the contents. Click thanksies Tilda. Just as I turned around, I knew why the maid was so obedient. Ha ha ha. Let's talk this through. We Tilda, will Tilda, my Tilda, dear Tilda, sister Tilda. Oh s, here comes the lecture. I got my hands on Darjeeling Fkfop aka the second best of Darjeeling. Even though I botched the brewing, it was still good Tilda. Just an arbitrary reason for inspiration to write this story. V3CH48 Fairy's Recruitment Quest What? Who are you? I immediately turned around to face the nurse. Me? She pointed at herself. Yes, you. Me? I am myself. The nurse looked at me and I felt a sense of familiarity from her. While I was pondering why, I noticed that the girl was standing idly. She was not surprised that I am here. She was not examining me with her eyes, she was only staring at my face and keeping silence. What is your name? Fairy. One word. Her expressionless face started to confirm my suspicions. She is Kudia. I feel so happy that I did not shut myself and cry over being backstabbed. At least I am not an emotionless doll Yuriko claims me to be. The girl I faced has a doll-like face with blue eyes and white hair. However she is far from Veronica. And her body shape is also different from top models. Well. Her chest is surely not smaller than mine. Fairy and I stood in place for a couple of minutes, until I got sick of the silence. Can you tell me what this ship is? There are lots of fuel and ammunition here. Fairy is a mobile base ship. F. Can it repair other ships? There are basic facilities for repairs. I breathed out in relief. Now we just need to move this ship then. Impossible. The ice thickness is around 2 meters. The hull will be broken in case of continuous moving without an icebreaker. Fairy cooled down my dreams. I brainstormed the options. Only then I remembered something the girl said. You said Fairy is a ship, right? So you are a ship? Yes. F. Then can you do something like this? I deployed the gear. No. F. Okay, let me think about something to free you. Why? She tilted her head. Do you want to stay here forever? No, but why are you thinking of helping me? F. You have a ship with loads of fuel and ammo. I have a ship which lacks either of those. Understood. I will provide all possible assistance, if I am freed. After we reached an agreement, I headed out to search for Yuriko. The woman was standing at the bow, and trying to do something with the anchor's chains. Yuriko. I called out to her. What is it? Why, can your seagulls break the ice? It was the first idea I had, and the most possible. No, they control the weather, not the state of the water. Not a single breeze of warm air would reach this far. If you are planning to do something with this ship being stuck, I suggest you think of something else. Why? I was once again at square one. My next idea was to use the depth charges to crack the ice. It was immediately dismissed. The entire might of the shockwave would head up and follow the path of the least resistance, barely affecting the ice. Hey, Yuriko-san, would it work out if we cut the ice with the swords? It might work, if you use the divine steel katana. Though it will take a long time to bring this vessel to the open waters. Now that the planning progressed beyond nothing, 
I sent Eureka to the bridge, and went to search for Patricia. Together with Fairy we developed a plan on how to free the mobile base out of the ice field. After we made the necessary planning, Fairy started warming up the boilers and the steam systems of the transport, while the rest of us headed out to start cutting the ice. The work ahead of us was ridiculously long and cold. I was cutting the ice with the sharpness of the new katana, while Patricia was using magical sword skills to strengthen her blade. Yuriko and her Jeruki were used to teach us. That's right, since we have a long way ahead of us, we might as well learn some tricks from the ancient woman. By the end of the first week we managed to liberate Fairy from the ice and move her for 700 meters. During that time Patricia learned some truly terrifying magic skills. Of course, I was not far behind from her. Try putting your energy into the edge of the blade. Why? The tip of the katana started glowing white. Now show me what you've learned. Why, Kia? Pierce the tip of the katana pierced the ice surface with ease. It is the normal katana which could only scratch the surface. Good. It looks like you learned the basic sword skill blade strengthening. Now you just need to learn how to apply it to the entire blade. Why, whatever one may say, I am actually learning magic. Shatter few Tilda. That's nice Tilda. Patricia rested the sword on her shoulder, and looked at her handiwork. A little less than a square kilometer of ice was broken just by one strike. Whatever. I learned magic. I am still cooler than her, cries V3CH49. New asset after Yuriko taught us some ancient magic, Patricia and I managed to quickly make way for Fairy's ship. It took us only two damned weeks. Only 30 meters more. We are almost done. P. The two slave workers finally saw the light in the end of the tunnel. Stop standing, and keep cutting. Our foreman Eureka hurried us but even this was not enough to spoil our mood. Mountain Breaker. P. Shatter Patricia broke the remaining ice. While I quietly wept on a side. Our Gar Fairy's ship passed the ice cape safely, and set course towards the open sea. I immediately transmitted her the coordinates of my ship. After Fairy was almost a kilometer away from the edge of the ice field, the ship turned and set course to my destroyer. It's time for us to go to. I beckoned Patricia and Eureka, and the three of us started walking. We arrived to the stranded ship only by the next morning, however, we couldn't find the ship itself. Not at the site we left it. The ship was tied to ferry, and the cranes were moving back and forth, delivering materials. Ding destroyer tender available mobile base available entering port, allied refuel and repair. 1 gold time until done, 16 hours 1x torpedo, 1 gold, available supply, 0 time until done, Nan mobile base, supply depot active, dry dock ready to be commissioned, 1 platinum coin, production facility ready to be commissioned, 1 platinum coin, supply depot allows automatic repairs and resupplying of docked ship dry dock allows construction of new ships for materials materials can be mined by the mobile base or obtained with coins production facility allows automatic production and stockpiling of torpedoes for a few moments after i saw this i thought that i am the luckiest cat girl in the world then I saw the prices. I carried my companions to Fairy's ship and headed to the bridge. Fairy was standing above a scheme with my ship on it. The damaged parts were colored red and matched the ones which actually were acquiring repairs. Miss, the repairs are in progress. F. Nice to know this. Fairy, is there a way to hurry this up a bit? Yes, we can sink the destroyer and set sail immediately. I choked. If I had a dry dock, I would be able to finish the repairs quicker. The basic maintenance facilities are not suitable for large-scale repairs I have to conduct right now. F. The cogs in my head were audibly turning while I was thinking of what to do. Then, I immediately rushed to Patricia and Eureka. Girls, are there any monsters in the north? Not many, since I never heard of them. Patricia shattered my expectations, so I turned to Eureka. 
There were some, but they all are extinct now. Not many creatures can live for this long. My expectations were shattered twice. I returned to the bridge, and asked Fairy the same question. None. Now all of my hopes were trampled upon. I did not surrender and started searching. With the same result the girls predicted. How? Just where can I get money? Relax, doll. The money is but a part of this world. There are many other things that require your attention, such as. Why, saving one soul? Yuriko proudly nodded. To hell with it. I need at least three platinum coins. Good luck then. Mother would never share platinum with you, since a battleship costs a platinum coin. P. Ha. Let's go to sleep. Shall we? Why is it so hard? I really lack money. And should I restock the torpedoes? And I will be as poor as I was before. A quarter of a platinum coin, that is all of my savings. Load the starboard guns, they're coming at US. Two battleship under the pirate flags were turning downwind to escape from Benetian squadron. The enemy had only three ships, and since they are going upwind, the pirates would be able to run away. One broadside, and the battleships would raise all sails and bedsheets to run, while the superior firepower is yet to counterattack. Boom 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 what? There. F. The sailors stared in shock when their 32 PDR cannonballs bounced off the enemy flagship. After both sides exchanged shots, Benetian ships started turning to chase after the pirates. However, they already were far behind. This time we are lucky. Give me the damage report. The pirate captain looked at the battered side of his ship, and grieved for the souls they lost today. Captain, they're closing in. He was startled when the first mate stormed into the room. What? Both men hurried to the deck, and saw that the Benetian flagship was already here. It was easily overtaking them, even though it was smoking. May your powder explode. The captain cursed but he had no time to keep cursing them. Ready the guns. Boom 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 before the crew even approached the cannons. The enemy fired. Boom 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 the broadside was followed not by splinters and whistling cannonballs but by explosions. That day, two pirate battleships did not return to their base. V3CH50. Mischievous cat and maiden I have no idea how Fairy managed to repair the broken hull but she did it. I didn't have to pay for repair and resupply. Yet my ship was now seaworthy. After I transferred the crew to my ship. Two ships set sail. Ten minutes later Fairy started lagging behind. Cure an army to Fairy, what is going on? Why are you lagging behind? This is Fairy. Do you know that I can't sail faster than 80 knots? You are two times faster. I smiled wryly. S sorry, we'll wait for you. It is unrequired. You just need to stay in range to return to me when you need fuel. I am not a warship. I am but a transport. I will be sending my coordinates every 12 hours. I will stay on my current course, until ordered otherwise. Fairy, out. F. I wondered if Fairy will be alright. Monsters, pirates, Benetian fleet. Intense stare Patricia was drilling holes in me. When I looked at her, she continued staring at me. I expected her to be nagging and glaring with murderous intent, however. She was looking like a child who saw a cool new toy, ask away. How does it work? How can you talk to other ship from here? Does it use light signals? Or maybe flags? Come on, show me. In a split second her face approached from one meter to one millimeter. Can you move away a bit? Her eyes shone with curiosity. So, will you show? Will you? Will you? Instead of moving away, she closed the distance even more and pushed her forehead against mine. Chew I have no idea why the hell I kissed her but now I was dangerously close to a maiden with a sword. The maiden who can clear a square kilometer of thick ice with a single swing. I slowly moved my face away from her and prepared to do Jezza. Patricia remained in place. Curiosity kills the cat but I just had to look at her face. I looked from below, because she tilted her head down. 
Instead of righteous maidenly fury I was seeing a tomato maiden, the deed is done, so I better retreat before her OS reinitializes and she kills me on the spot. I went to the stern and started fishing, the seagulls were there the next second. Yuriko came too, and sat down near me. Where are you sailing to? Why? We were asked to sail to the west, your children changed our plans but now it is time to get back to work. I see. I might as well look at what happened to those who abandoned mine shrines the first. Why, do you happen to know about the seas there? I heard only few ships return from sailing between Benizio and the west. I have no idea what Benizio is, but I know that there lies the abyss. It crosses the ocean, dividing the western half from the eastern half. Thousands of years ago all of the gods decided that the humankind must not be let sail across the ocean before they are ready, and so the world was split in half by a deep rift, late known as the Abyss. For a second I thought that Eureka may be a goddess. I laughed at myself for thinking this rusty woman may be a god, and then proceeded with asking. Still, a deep water wouldn't stop the ships. The terrors like the deep. Since there was a lot of space, the sea monsters could inhabit the rift, and grow bigger. Even I have no idea how large they became. Why? Where do you know this from? I thought the seagulls don't tell you everything, or do they? I pointed at the divine sword, of which she did not know. Foolish doll. I knew what was going in this world. It was a long ago, when people used my shrines, and when they were talking to me. When they were believing in me, and telling me what they encountered. Now, I am worshipped by less than a hundred souls, you bet they did not wander further than from the vicinity of my home. I patted the forgotten woman, and continued trying to catch something from the fast-moving ship. Meanwhile, Patricia locked herself in one of the cabins, and went crazy. There were weird sounds and giggling. Also, the bed was shaking for no reason. Four sisters no twenty-eight. Recently I faced an unexpected crisis, that is about to affect the entire academy. This time it is not the freak's sister. Only now I understood the true meaning of Big Sis's words. Do not postpone what can be done today, and don't delay what needs time to be done. A month ago a new fashion trend appeared, and the entire academy went to buy the new clothes. I was seeing no reason for me to worry about it but now I feel like the trend is standing firm and I am about to become unfashionable, and that is why I am required, as if I would waste my time on something like this. Just lift your off the seat, damn you, whenever you're unrequired you show up immediately but now that you are needed, you plate some dear on me. I tried to shake New Jersey off the seat but she already grew roots. Why should I plate some dear, if I have one, come on. It's not like the clothes will disappear only because we didn't go today. She didn't even bother looking at anything but the screen where were girls with ridiculous figures and huge eyes. You're either going, or I'll tell Big Sis that you are playing porn games. She finally spared me a glance. Go tell her. I won't be surprised to hear I'm playing that kind of games. NJ. This is a futile and ungrateful work but I am yet to surrender. I said lift you fatter off the damn chair. Stop pulling me. I won't abandon my darlings. NJ, you're the trashiest sister in the universe. What's this look of disappointment? Because you are disappointment. Whiskey. You know that those things are not worthy of being a concern. Don't be worried about fashion, and dress as you like. New Jersey. You are the last person I want to hear this from. She won't even have clothes other than her hoodie. If I were wasn't buying clothes for her. Well, I can reconsider my plans for today, if. I know this look, to hell with you. Are you satisfied now? I pulled the skirt down the very moment the freak reached for the phone. Come on. Your panties are the humankind's most valuable treasure tilde. NJ, go die. Ding ding welcome, how can I help you, dear customers Tilda? A clerk appeared out of nowhere, right after we entered the first shop we encountered. Well, you can help M. K. H. us. I corrected my sister before she managed to say something perverted. Whiskey, 
It wasn't required, you know? New Jersey writhed until I moved my foot away. The heels can be so useful. Can you show us some dresses? I asked the clerk, before she starts asking about the freak. Of course, miss. The clerk led us to a changing room. New Jersey immediately sat on a couch, and stared at me. Stop staring at me. It's embarrassing. The doors opened, and the clerk pulled in a huge rack of dresses. Everything was fashionable. Here is the new collection. Would you require tea? After I nodded, the clerk put a teapot and confections on the coffee table, and left. Or, drink as much as you want Tilda. Big sis will be sweetened by your go for like cheeks Tilda. What a freak. I wetted my throat, and started choosing dresses. I picked up a couple of dozens of dresses and prepared to try them. You? What's up Tilda? This shameless. Go away. I can't change while you're here. Come on, whiskey. We're all girls in here Tilda. NJ, can somebody like you be counted as one? Come on. I may not be as gifted as Mo but, NJ, you're the enemy of all women, and yet you want to stay here while I'm changing? Yes. This, go away, you freak. Only after I aimed the main guns at her New Jersey left, I am sure she is right outside, with her ear at the door. You are disgusting. Am I? The shameless freak answered to my murmurs, as if it's something normal. I ignored her and tried all of the dresses I liked. I chose three of them, and put on the one I liked the most. Enter, you jerk. New Jersey entered, and immediately proceeded to the couch, without even saying that I'm cute or that the dress suits me. On my darling whiskey Tilda. Come here. Big sis wants to fluff you Tilda. Pervert. Shameless. Freak. Or, good girl Tilda. Good girls deserve to be patted Tilda. Jerk. Idiot. Hentai. Did you choose a dress Tilda? Did I mention she's shameless? I did. Or, good girl Tilda. Is it the one you're wearing Tilda? NJ, it is. You foo foo Tilda, my cutie pie sister will beautify any dress she wears Tilda. NJ, as if your flattery will please me. My cute whiskey Tilda. W well, I will let her go. Only because she said I am cute. It's not like I wanted to hear it from her. V3CH51. A prophetic dream if my calculations are correct. And they are, because the map says so. We must be re-entering Benetian waters. We will raid a few caravans and get some gold. I want to start the torpedo production ASAP. Before I sailed away from Ferry, I restocked the torpedoes. She is almost a hundred miles behind us, so we won't meet again soon. The seagulls were comfortably sitting on the ship, and painting everything white. Eureka was meditating. Patricia was still shut in the cabin. The noises stopped, so she must have fallen asleep. When I thought about falling asleep, I immediately yawned. The course is steady, and there are no unplanned shallows on our way. I might as well sleep for a bit. I went to the captain's quarters and dived under the blanket. The sleep overtook me and I was ready to see some dreams. I blinked. I woke up at an unknown place. I looked around and found myself in a large office. I was sitting at a desk with stacks of paper around me. In my hand was a fountain pen, but the hand was not mine. It was large and strong, a man's hand. I'd have such hands, if not for that truck. Before I calmed down, I heard a knocking coming from behind a large door. Enter, who is it? Enter. My words turned into a man's words. They are different but bear a similar meaning, as if my words are translated through his mind. The door opened, and a young man in a suit entered. He immediately knelt and bowed his head. I brought the most urgent of news. Your Imperial Majesty, allow this humble servant to deliver them. I hesitated what to answer, until I decided to go with the flow. Tell me everything. Then do tell me those news. I hope it is not related to the recent events in the colonies. As you wish, your Imperial Majesty. The recent envoy we sent to an island nation beyond the sea has returned. The barbarians had cut off his tongue and his hands. The young man gulped. What? 
Was this confirmed to happen because of the backwater nation? The voice echoed in the room, making the young man pale. Yes, the islanders declared that they sever all ties with us and will sink any ship that crosses the abysmo. We know it only through the ship that delivered our envoy back. They said it was because he assassinated their chieftain. I thought for a moment. Then what are we going to do? I see. Perhaps, Chancellor, do tell me what is on your mind. I am unworthy. The young man bowed. Maybe you have ideas. I am always curious to know what my subjects think. Maybe your bright head can give me an inspiration. I am most honored by your Imperial Majesty's words. This humble servant believes that the backwater nation should be taught a lesson. It would suffice to send a fleet, and turn them into our colony. The young man proudly declared. Why colony? We may require new lands, but why should we bother ourselves with keeping the backwaters in our fold? May this humble servant remind you, that the entire supply of crystal is imported from the islanders? If the supplely runs out, the nobles will be the most displeased. The young man knelt. Why is crystal so important? Have we not yet invented the methods of refining crystal on our own? I am ashamed to report that neither of our factories and artisans managed to replicate, or at least approach the quality of Benetian crystal. The tableware and glass from beyond the abysmo are acquired for our economy. Wait. Those idiots really. If this is, no way. It is the West? My brain boiled but on the outside it only appeared that the man I possess was thinking, will it actually be helpful to send a fleet? Do you think that a fleet would be able to resolve the stalemate we face? I am unqualified to answer this. If your Imperial Majesty orders, the fleet will achieve anything you command. If you wish for other means, our diplomats are ready to board a warship, and make the islanders kneel to your imperial majesty's will. The young man knelt too, and waited for my answer. Should I sweeten Benizio's life? V3CH52 Showering in gold, nah, ain't worth my time, a backwater nation like that, is not worth our fleet's time. Chancellor, prepare a diplomatic mission. You can request a battleship of any kind. Make the islanders prostrate in repentance. Your wish is my command. The young man bowed, and backed out of the room. I felt like I have some control over this body, so I stood up and approached a window. Through the clear glass I saw a large bustling city with a port in a distance. Even Benizio's port with battleship at its roadstead was not as intimidating. Lines and lines of battleships were anchored at the roadstead. Hundreds of merchant ships were searching for a free spot, and the entire port was covered in a light haze. Further away from the city I was seeing clouds of smoke, rising from behind tall buildings. The entire sky was filled with smog, and I didn't see any piece of blue. I counted some of the building's floors. At most there were six floors but there were also a couple of buildings that are slightly higher. I can only feel sorry for the doge, who incurred those guys' wrath. That day Maximiliano XIII, the emperor of Castilia Empire, signed a decree. The next morning an ironclad set sail to the east. Right after the possessed man's pen drew a signature, I woke up at my ship. We were sailing for no less than three days, until we encountered a group of ships. All of them sailed under Benetian flag. All hands, man the stations. I called out for Patricia and Eurico. The closer we approached, the more evident it was that we encountered a merchant caravan. It is time to holster the Jolly Roger Tilda. I'm desperate enough for money since torpedoes are not cheap. Even those poor guys holds can help me. It is not a piracy if you are at war, right? Patricia, do you know if there is a way to communicate to the marauders? You can try the signal flags and lights but I doubt they will see anything from such a distance. It is only visible when you are already in a formation. P. So, we had a way of telling all those souls we sunk, that they can surrender? Even if we tried, they wouldn't see anything. Patricia shrugged her shoulders. Follow me, then. I dragged her out, and stood her by a searchlight. Kyra? P. 
blink a couple of times to attract their attention. The blinded girl was sitting in a corner, and commanding me, now, long signal, short signal, long signal twice, short signal, long signal. The signals attracted the attention immediately, the people started running around on the decks, what now? Long signals, repeat them until they stop. P, I did so. The activity on the decks increased. Then I saw how a couple of the ships started showing blinking flame lights. Patricia. They showed two short, one long, one short, one long. Repeat the first sequence. P. They are showing another signal. One long, one short, and three long. Fire a warning shot. P. What? Fire. I pulled a gun's trigger. Bang boom 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 oh. Great, they're firing back. I sighed, and prepared to sink them. You might try signal them this, three short, two short, one long, one short one long, one short, one short, one long, one short, one short, one long, one short, one long, two short, one short, one short, one long, one short. I did what she said, even though I have no effing idea what it is. Weirdly enough, the ships suddenly started lowering their flags and removing their sails. You're genius. I patted Patricia, who was still dizzy from the sudden light therapy. We approached each ship individually, and with the three of us showing swords, the crew accepted our offer of paying for safe passage. The cash is better than the goods. It is always liquid, and can be exchanged everywhere, in the stats screen especially, while the goods. It is such a hassle. We rich, girls tilde. I counted our little paycheck. 36 copper, 18 silver, 47 gold. Oh. Wow, what? Are you not happy? We're quite rich now. P, we are. We just need two and a half platinum coins to be all suited up. Eureka was not bothered by our new fortune while Patricia almost pulled her hair just after hearing me say we need more cash. At least there should be more caravans. It's time to raid some caravans. Ugh. Common sense, where are you? P, V3 CH 53. Maritime fun during our little raiding we dealt a slight blow to Benetian maritime trade, and now we are short on fuel. Ferry was directed to the pirate's main base and we will reunite with her there. We have some time to relax, and we might as well use it. Are you sure Fairy will make it to their base? P, she will. My turn Tilda. Don't you dare touching my knight. Before she finished shouting, my rook captured her last night. Now I had a clear way to the king. Move your rook here. Why, hey, don't advise her. Sorry, doll. It's nothing personal. Eureka shamelessly shrugged her shoulders and continued whispering to Patricia. Check Tilda. I started sweating. The situation was not hopeless but the problem is that the sly woman abused an opening immediately. Do you think Alba will be angry, because we did nothing of what she asked? Mother won't be angry, if she sees what we picked up. P, if you say so. Check. Move. Why? No advising. Wait for your turn, will you? Yuriko gave me a smile, which can only mean that she doesn't care. I started humming loudly, which made her whispers barely reach Patricia's ear. The game continued, and my opponents was approaching the demise. I found it weird that there was a chessboard left in one of the cabins, but now I find it weird that Yuriko knows the rules, even though she shouldn't have any knowledge. Patricia rested her head on the table, and stared at my figures. It was already the end, and some players might even consider surrendering. Eureka whispered something, and Patricia continued the struggle. The offensive was already impossible, so they were countering the checks. Why are we turning? P. There is a couple of ships nearby. I'll sail to loot them. Ah, I see. Wait, please. Don't do it. P. How about I wash the dishes? Just don't move the rook there. Why? The two of them looked at me with puppy eyes. We'll have a good amount of food later Tilda. 
Yuriko sighed and accepted the deal. I did not end the game with checkmate right now. We've lost. The game ended a couple of turns later. We stretched, and picked up the swords. After we extort the ships, we will sail around to find some seafood. A kraken would be preferable. The merchants preferred to share their wealth, and were let go peacefully. On the other hand, the search for the food was not going smoothly. I'm almost bingo. Wait. We're playing bingo? P. No. It's the term for when your fuel supplies are enough to reach the destination, and you have some spare in case of an emergency. Unless we find a prey, we will have to fish. You know what it would mean? The seagulls. A prey was not caught. And after we sailed around for a bit more, I set sail to the pirate base. Even on our way there we were not encountering signals. No food source was available. So we ended up fishing. C-A-C-A-C-A. The entire flock was in the air. Right when the fish was leaving the water, the bastard birds were catching it midair. Come on, just let us catch something. You lazy. These children became so dependent on you. What a commendable owner you are. Please, do remember that they are your responsibility now. Yuriko said so with indifferent face, as if she was mentoring me. However. We all knew that she just pushed the seagulls feeding on me. Why me? Aren't they your children? If you love somebody, one day you have to be prepared to let them go. Like a mother letting go of her children, when they establish their own families, I. Why? Bulls me? That too. Yuriko glanced away. Ping oh. A devilish smile appeared on my face. Ping we are turning, girls tilde. They gripped to the railings as I did a sharp turn. As the ship passed over the signal, I released the depth charges on the stern. Splash boom 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 the signal did not disappear, so I did another pass. Splash boom 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 one of the charges exploded near the target, and soon something emerged from the sea. Wood? Did we really? P. O. Oh, those guys. I facepamed. My hopes for a good dinner ended up being a submarine. Four sisters no 29. I opened a door and entered a small conference room where were sitting various kinds of people. All of them were clad in armor or other pricey equipment, and had weapons. Creak when I stepped on a creaking plank. The entire room stared at me. The next second their looks changed to disappointment. Hey, baby, have you mistaken a room? A guy in adamantium armor laughed at me. I may not be in my mage disguise but I am not dressed poorly. He just has no idea Tilda. I ignored the stairs, and sat down at a free seat. Soon a clerk entered the room and turned on a magical orb. Thank you for coming, esteemed adventurers. The kingdom has summoned you to help us suppress a stampede that is about to occur. The threat is estimated to be S rank. The payment is 10 gold coins to every participant and bonus for every killed monster. I yawned, does your excellency wish for another reward? The clerk noticed how bored I am. Well, I started thinking what I can ask for. I remember Whiskey wanted some food, so maybe the king will be so kind to share the royal chef with us for a day. Is this a joke or something? That girl is as useless as a bunch of no-name background characters from the same PT as the adamantium warrior started shouting in disbelief. You are from SS rank party, I remember? The clerk glanced at them, and received confirmation nods. Then do you, perhaps, know who this lady is? The adventurers shook their heads. Dude, she doesn't even have a weapon. Are you at least sure she will not get in our way? They continued ridiculing me. Let's see who laughs the last. Those guys may be SS rank. And they are one of the three SS rank parties in the entire world. But they forgot who I am. Have you heard about the stampede breaker? The adventurers started sweating buckets. What's up? I waved them. So this is she? Their one and only. Their ultimate. The SSS rank adventurer will assist with the stampede. The official excuse is, I'm bored. I showed V after the clerk announced myself. 
The entire room went silent and their gazes turned into looks of veneration. When the four of us became bored, we started hunting the local monsters. Then we grew bored of it and hunted some naughty demons. Then giants. Then everything that was not a normal animal. One day I argued with New Jersey on who is the best of Iowa class. And the true fun started. We were shooting dragons left and right, until we exterminated everything around. In the end she won but all four of us became SSS rank amongst the adventurers. Back to the present. The stampede consists of more than 10,000 monsters. The scouts confirmed that there are demons too. The SSS rank party whiskey pants already agreed to assist with their high rank magic. You are going to deal with the remaining threats. Is that clear? The clerk briefed the adventurers. After everything was over, I finally headed back to the academy. And then it will be my time to shine. I covered the seal on my right eye, and with a super cool swift move I removed it, showing the world my unsealed might. Or so the law should be saying, all right, girls. H how a about I lead this one? Iowa raised a meek voice. Don't worry big sis. I, the great. Shut up, Mo. At least Big Sis knows what to do and won't be showing off instead of fighting. Right after Whiskey barked at me, the decision was made. With my plan being thrown into the bin, Iowa gets her stage time. V3CH54. Breakout then what were you doing? Alba was furious when she saw us return with no results. Right after I dropped the anchor at the pirate port, Patricia and I went to report our return. Ferry is three hours away. And after I resupply we will set sail to the west. We got this sword. And how is that sword going to save us? Even though Alba ruins my ears with her shouting. I can forgive her. The pirate port became empty. Few ships remain here and many of them are almost scraps. Out of the entire battleship force the pirates gathered. A single galleon remains. The situation becomes desperate, and we may be one of the few ships that are combat ready. This sword is ultra strong. It can cut steel like paper. Also we learnt a few magic skills. The woman started tearing, and silently sat down. Patricia rushed to support her and gave her some water. We are doomed. A, how many there are? Ships? We have no F idea. Only the blockade runners manage to stay alive. Our patrols disappear closer and closer from our base. All battleships that sailed out to intercept Benetian fleet have not returned. Our only report suggests that the Doge himself commands the operation, and that his flag was holstered on the newest warship. It is all. A, are there any chances to fight? How about we all run and search for another place to hide? For me it looks like the best idea. The port already became empty, and there should be no issues with packing the last supplies. We are already preparing to make a run for it. Your arrival is a blessing in disguise, though a western diplomat would be a billion times more effective at curbing the doge's aggression. There is a vassal port of Benizio that agreed to join our cause, as long as we protect them they agree to let us stationed there. They also have gun batteries. We will set sail this night. Alba finally calmed down and started explaining the situation. Meanwhile, Patricia brought a map and showed where the mentioned port is. A long time ago Veronica and I were about to visit that place. She might be on her way there too. This is Ferry. Dropping anchors. Approach when ready. F. From which side? Does not matter. F. I steered the rudder and slowly sailed to the transport ship's side. When I stopped, the ships started throwing ropes and cables to each other, until both vessels were tied together. Fairy's cranes were transferring boxes with ammo and spare parts from her hold, and a fuel line was connected to my tanks. The entire process will be finished in no time. While there was nothing to do I visited her at her bridge. Can you commission a new facility? I want the production to be started immediately. Understood. I already gathered the materials you ordered. The nurse girl confirmed the order, and I checked the cash. During our short time at the sea, 
I managed to get additional money and now we have 3 copper, 61 silver, 41 gold, and 1 platinum coin. Commissioning facility. F. The transport changed. The hull slowly split, and the ship spread out. My ship was shifted from ferry side to a small dock-like place. The cargo hold turned into a small warehouse with cranes, and the oil tank became a large circular tank. Aside from the dock where was my ship? There were four more slots. The new facility also appeared. It was a bit further away. Behind the transport's superstructure, which turned into a port administration. Now that's a mobile base. A small floating port. Commencing production. Ferry monotonously reported. How soon I will have the new stuff? Everything should be ready to be supplied within 72 hours. Pillars of smoke appeared from around the new facility. My own industry started working on military production. Because I am but a lonely destroyer. I also bought a ship to assist me in escort. The coins love to be used, and a single Akazuki shouldn't be too much of a spending. Destroyer Squadron. Second ship, Yuzuki. Third ship, no ship commissioned. Fourth ship, no ship commissioned. Fifth ship, no ship commissioned. In reserve, zero ships. A large cloud of particles shone near me, and settled at another docking slot. The new ship immediately appeared there. Are you going to stay here? Yes. I cannot move during the production. I will be alright. I glanced at Fairy with suspicion but she just returned to scheme of the port, and was ordering something through it. I left the girl to her hard work and prepared to report back to Alba. V3CH55. The exodus when the night fell. The pirates started boarding their ships and loading the remaining cargo. As Alba explained, it was not done earlier to fool the possible observers. Second pennant, guard the other side. Two destroyers, Kuranami and Yuzuki left Ferry's docks and set sail to opposite sides of the port. Order confirmed. Yuzuki telegrammed the confirmation, and sailed away. My hopes of having a cute girl were ruined by the system's cruel joke. The ships are only empty husks with basic AI. They obey my orders but are very stupid on their own. At least their gunnery skills should be on par with mine. While the pirates finish their preparations and raising anchors, I will provide ASW protection. During my test sail we encountered two submarines and in the night those guys will no doubt become more brazen. We were steaming at low speed, and watching out for submarines. The surroundings were completely dark. The darkness was only disturbed by occasional flashes of oil lamps on the coast, and light signals I exchanged with Yuki. If my estimations were correct, the preparations were almost finished. The pirate ships blinked lights a few times, signaling that they are soon going to set sail. Second pennant, escort departing ships. Orders confirmed, the pinging sound of telegraph was followed by the ship changing course. The submarines did not show up until the end of preparations. After each pirate ship flashed a light, I gave my confirmation. Oiga oiga after Izuki confirmed readiness. The pirates set sail. The wind favored the pirates' escape. The ships managed to reach whooping eight knots. I could only cry and expect a very slow sailing. T plus 1700 hours the next evening after we set sail, a group of pirate ships joined the formation. I was covering the formation from left front, and Yuzuki was covering from right rear. The pirate ships were sailing in three lines, which helped with regrouping. We already encountered several small groups but this time, we had an actual force joining. A black sail ship, the so-called Black Demon, and a couple of heavy frigates were fleeing from Benetian forces. By using its high speed, the Black Demon managed to flee from battleships. The situation is beyond dire. I could only say that much. The last time I saw pirate fleet, it consisted of at least seven battleships and the pirates were planning to capture a few of Benetian ships. Now the pirates have only two. Of course, there are galleons but they have 20 to 30 guns each, in comparison with battleships 30 to 40 guns per side. 
The fortune favoured the pirate fleet. We did not encounter any patrols and after two days of sailing we were almost at the new base. I wonder if there are any crews left. P. I doubt there are crews that managed to escape the enemy's grasp. Those blockade runners might rejoin the fleet but I wouldn't expect that. Well, that B should show up soon. P. Who? Veronica. P. You surely dislike her. Oh, so you do like her? After she killed you? Patricia was way too irritated to talk. I still tried to make her talk but to no avail. She was always avoiding any topics concerning her sister, regardless of my intentions or reasons to ask. It doesn't hurt to try again. You know it too, she will come soon. Those guys are not idiots. Can you tell me something about her? It would help fighting. All you need is to shoot and swing your saber. Is this enough? All of a sudden, Patricia grasped my throat as if she was trying to strangle me. She did not put any force into grasping me but I was still sad to hear it. Get your hands off me. I was a bit more sad than usually. How can I know what to do with her? If nobody answers. I have no idea who she is for you. I can only rely on what I know myself. Patricia turned away and whispered, just know that she is a rabid bee. P. While I was fuming, a smoke appeared on the horizon. We could only hope that the smoke is coming from the port, and not from ships. R. Right, those guys are all sail propelled. I sighed, and went out to catch some fresh air, before the bridge's atmosphere becomes insufferable. V3 CH56. Rees public the closer we sail to the smoke the thicker it became. It was the smoke of blast furnaces which produced steel. As it turns out, the vassal port of Benizio was spared from their tyranny because they had access to iron and coal, making them the second by steel output, right after Benizio themselves. Or so Patricia says. Fairy will be happy to see this much refined steel. At least she wouldn't have to zigzag all the time to search for ores and the minerals like she did on her way. When the port finally entered our view I was astonished. On one side of a bay there were docks and manufactures, and on the other side were endless slums. Is this all right? I pointed at towering constructions that looked like they were built by a two years old kid playing with Lego. The only ones who lived good here were the doge's administrators. What? You really thought that the city of Benizio is so marvelous because they are good and kind. Those FS exploit everything that is outside of the city's boundaries. W well, it's a good time to take off the pink glasses. Now I see why a port would risk being raised by Benizian navy that is at our throats. They have nothing to lose, second pennant, guard the port. Orders confirmed, warning, enemy encountered. Engaging, suddenly. Mizuki steered to the right, and headed somewhere. I immediately followed. Pink second pennant, prepare to bomb the folly out of them. Orders confirmed. Pom pom two destroyers discharged their depth charge projectors. Boom 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 boom, enemy neutralized. Resuming orders, rest in pieces. I offered my prayers to foolish souls who sailed into us, before returning back on course. Our troubles did not stop on that. My radar picked up flying objects on approach. I may know that steampunk has blimps and steam aircraft but I'm 100% sure neither of this stuff has the length of a wyvern and can flap the wings. With Patricia's translation I messaged that there are wyverns incoming, and sailed back to the pirate fleet that was parking at the roadstead. Simultaneously I saw a smoke coming from the way we came. I sighed out in relief. I have no idea how Fairy does this but with her assistance, for both his guns, we might make it. Second pennant, engage the flying targets. Orders confirmed, Mizuki turned towards the Wyvern swarm and opened fire with two turrets. Stupid AI, turn and fire all guns. Orders confirmed. I joined two. Bang 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 the first salvos of my 127mm guns went haywire. I had to focus on countering the wyvern's movement and maneuvering but unlike their usual behavior, they flew straight and did not even try avoiding the shells. After I stopped trying to predict their flight pattern and fired where they flew now, 
I scored a lot of hits. The Wyverns were contained, currently. With my newly obtained points I decided to buy AA guns. Ding you received 234 upgrade points IJN Kirin Army, DDL. Upgrade points, 36. Torpedoes, 66. HP, 3700. High minus 100%. AU minus 74%. 2232 nanometers 25 millimeters dual AA mounts 1 improved mounts 0 100 25 millimeters single AA mounts 2 max 13 millimeters deck mounts max boo 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 bum as soon as I upgraded my AA the 25 millimeters gun started barking the combined AA might have two destroyers mowed down most of the wyverns however the survivors reached the pirate ships, ignoring us. A fight started immediately. Kaboom seemingly for no reason a pirate galleon exploded. One may think it was a powdery explosion but I saw that it was pushed out of the water a bit. As if it was exploded from underneath. Second pennant. Deal with the submarine sap. Orders confirmed. I hoped that ferry would arrive sooner to deliver what I required the most right now. But the smoke from behind turned into a fleet of Benetian warships. Are these idiots burning their own ship? Patricia tried to hold back her laugh. No, they have a steam-powered ship, like myself. The giggling girl immediately turned pale. What? P. Perhaps because they understood that they are now seen, the steam-powered battleship accelerated. I accelerated too. While Ozuki is trying to smoke out the submarines, I have to buy some time for the pirates. The winds favored us on our way but now the entire fleet will have to sail against the wind. Which is not a problem for the enemy. As I prepared to fire a couple of direct shots to blow up the battleship's powder storage, it fired. Bang 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 we must break the distance, now. How the hell? Thought I, while the first two tubes were discharged. Four sisters no thirty. The carriage stopped and we looked at a large field in front of us. A couple of days ago Mo was asked to clear a bunch of vermin, and since there are much more than one battleship can handle, the entire squadron joined their efforts. I am so proud of my little sisters. I just need to do my best to be a good big sis for them. Stop counting bees. I, I can see the stampede right from here. NG pointed at a mountain far away. Its entire side was covered in monster, all rushing here. Marvelous. We are running out of time. Again. Let's hurry, girls. Mo. We arrived to a tent where the command was. There were a couple of veteran adventurers, all past their forties. The adventurers who can fight are on the front line, waiting for the monsters that would make it past the firing range. I was are here. What's the situation? Thank God. Whiskey pants are here. The tent livened up. Why? Why this one? Whiskey started shaking New Jersey, who registered us as adventurers a year ago. Whenever Whiskey hears the party's name. She can't help trying to kill our silly gamer. It's a great name. Ain't it Tilda? Don't twink at me. I'm not going to be saving you. The name's great but they're servants of. Mo, later, Mo. Is the firing range clear? I stopped the conversation from heading in the wrong direction and prepared to assume my RSO duties. Everything till the mountain range is clear. Rip them apart. With the guild's representative's permission we lined up. Half a mile away from us are the adventurers, 100 yards to our back is a city. Rock and roll, girls, ready the guns. Iowa, guns up. Missouri, guns up. Mo, New Jersey, guns up. NJ, Wisconsin, guns up. We I calculated the leading and radioed the first target. Firing. Boom 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 this salvo is dedicated to Her Majesty's panties. NJ, boom 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 what nonsense are you spouting? We boom 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 from the depths of hell, I call upon you. Mo, shorten it, Mo, we're not at a drill. I, hellfire. Mo, boom 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 Iowa, finished firing. New Jersey, finished firing. Wisconsin, finished firing. Big sis. 
Can I now? I gave her go ahead and checked the situation. While Mo was chanting another weird incantation, I summarized the results and prepared a new target. Mo, calibrate the FCS to 7 degrees left. Whiskey, stop kicking New Jersey. And you, nice hit. Prepare the guns. We had enough time to fire three salvos at the stampede before the monsters entered the secondary's range. All five guns are clear to fire. Prepare the guns. Bang 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 Iowa, guns up. Bang 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 Missouri, guns up. Mo, bang bang New Jersey, guns up. Dujin Shai are on their way. NJ, bang 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 are you a late bloomer, or what? She was supposed to concentrate on the combat ten minutes ago. Bang Wisconsin, guns up. Wi bang 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 all guns, open fire. Bang boom 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 bang 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 this salvo is dedicated to whiskey stars and stripes. Bang bang boom 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 how? Wi bang BB64, focus. Bang 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 I F U, New Jersey. Wi boom 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 the bombs were dropped. I glared at Mo before she started chanting. She grinned back and swung her arm. Bang bang boom 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 Iowa, finished firing. My sisters are killing me better than any monster could. Bang 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 New Jersey, finished firing. Bang bang Missouri, finished firing. Bang 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 Wisconsin, finished firing. Bang the monsters have already crossed the distance to the field and have entered our direct sight line. Cease firing. Cease firing. I. N. J. W. Mo. We did our job here. Now it is up to the adventurers to kill the leftover monsters. Yes. You can go now. I looked at the twitching and squirming Missouri, who was eager to rush into action. Thanks, big sis. I love you Tilda. She ran away so fast, that I swear there was an after image. Ha. Huh. How about I make you something to eat while Miss Hothead is having fun? With everyone's approval I went to pick up some wood. V3CH57 The newest and the modern I listened into the sonars pinging. The calm sound of torpedo propellers was sometimes interrupted by cannonballs hitting water around me. I never even assumed that Benizio would have guns capable of firing at 3 kilometers and almost had a few holes in my side. Ping the two torpedoes I launched were almost at the target. Just a bit more. The steam-powered battleship started turning. They shouldn't know what a torpedo is but they still steered like crazy to avoid my presence. It was a narrow miss. Hitting would be the perfect outcome. The actual goal of those torpedoes was buying me time. I was saved from the battleship's broadside and started breaking the distance. Adios, bastards. I waved them and headed back to reunite with these Yuki, which has blown the submarines to shreds. By the time the battleship started chasing me at full steam, I was already far ahead and accelerating even further. The pirate forces tried following us but the sail ships were too slow at sailing against the wind. It pains me to say this but those guys are dead. I told the painful truth to Patricia. I think they would understand. This strange ship's death would be the best compensation for their lives. P. I launched the second wave of torpedoes. Kaboom as if our luck hit the rock's bottom. The second mount's oxygen generator exploded. Just how lucky you are? Patricia ran outside to look at what happened. I will have to assure her that everything is alright. Still, the situation was in our favor. The newest enemy ship was following us and left behind all their escorts. Mizuki already opened fire. Fairy reported that she sent me the product. Splash when the battleship's course stabilized. I launched the third package of gifts. Perhaps because they saw the splashes. The battleship immediately changed course, before the torpedoes fuses even set. I was yet to show the enemy that I have a range advantage. Only after the two destroyers surrounded the battleship I opened fire. Bang 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 the first salvo hit the bow and set the ship on fire. The following shots connected to, devastating the battleship's deck, the sailing gear, the masts, 
and the sails themselves were damaged. The middle mast was broken and fell down. The enemy ship was now powered only by its paddle wheels. Bang 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 I fired at the side of the ship, in hopes of blowing up the powder storage. The side exploded, and when the smoke settled, I saw that the side has a large dent. It was not penetrated. Wow! You cheeky bastards! To think it is an actual ironclad! I commend your efforts. Second pennant, send them a couple of gifts. Mizuki launched the entire stock of torpedoes. Boom a torpedo hit the ironclad's bow, and made it pitch down. To my surprise, the ship was still alive and kicking. Bang 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 after seeing that this one is going to survive for a long time, I immediately continued pounding it with AP shells. Despite being pounded from two destroyers, the ironclad was still afloat and snapping at us with their surviving cannons. This is fairy, the supplies have arrived. I checked the stats and grinned. I saw a picture of a ship, it was a destroyer with number on its side, K2. The ship was immediately transferred to the squadron, destroyer squadron. Second ship, K2. Third ship, Moizuki. Fourth ship, no ship commissioned. Fifth ship, no ship commissioned. In reserve, zero ships. A burst of particles appeared by my side, and turned into a destroyer. The new ship had exactly the same layout as my ship but instead of puny dual torpedo mounts it had quintuple 610mm torpedo mounts. Second pennant, fire AP at the target. Focus on its side. Third pennant, fire fused he rounds at the sails. The 127mm gun started raining shells at the ironclad's side, and 100mm guns were tearing apart whatever was on the deck. A lot of shots later, the ironclad started listing, and fell on its side. A few lifeboats were left around it. All were filled with the survivors. Except for one announcement you can suggest your names for K2. V3CH58. The strongest warrior in the world in one of the lifeboats there was a person. While K2 and Yuzuki were picking up survivors, I headed to pick up the sole survivor from that boat. As I approached, the person jumped up from the boat. The person landed right on the bow deck, and I saw that it is our old acquaintance. Patricia and I stepped out to greet Veronica, my my Tilda, to think the two lovely girls would greet me Tilda. V. Long time no see? While Veronica kept her rapier in the scabbard, I had to keep Patricia's hand from drawing her sword. I am so glad we are together again Tilda. V, drop this nonsense, as if I would believe you've changed? P, you may, or may not, believe me, if I was to make a single step wrong, my own life would be in danger. Veronica took the scabbard, and threw it to us. I stretched out my hand to pick it up but my hand was immediately caught by Patricia. This snake is up to something. P, I understand your concern. Veronica turned her head, so we wouldn't see her tearing. Patricia's grip only tightened, both on my hand, and on the sword's handle. While the standoff continued, I heard how a bulkhead door opened, and Yuriko exited the ship's insides. She rarely interferes with what is going on, mostly spending her time in a cabin. She either meditates, or takes a short stroll on the deck when the weather is good. To think she left her seclusion during a battle? Interesting. Yuriko immediately started examining Veronica. She was cautious, and stood far behind us. If it was only my dear sister, I would understand you, but to think you would pick another woman instead of me? Veronica teared again. What an amusing sight. Yuriko approached closer and stood by our side. Veronica frowned. Ping in a split second Yuriko attacked Veronica. The girl blocked the attack with a knife, as expected. Why? Yuriko jumped back to us but still was on guard. The attack let Patricia draw her sword too, and now the two of them were ready to strike. It isn't looking fair, Kuranami. Don't underestimate that girl. There's something wrong about her. Why, for example? V. I let the two of them handle the situation. I will come to help if necessary. After the three of them understood I am not going to join, the fight started. 
Thanks for keeping it tilde. Veronica managed to get past the vanguard, and gripped the rapier from under my legs. She immediately was attacked but fended both of my companions with ease. An ancient woman and a master swordswoman were fought by a single girl, who was parrying their attacks with no effort. Veronica only was starting to warm up. Well, it is no longer fun, you know? Suddenly, she pushed back both Patricia and Yuriko, and leapt at me. Ping as if I would let you. Yuriko's Jurugi stopped the rapier right in front of my face. Bothersu. Veronica had to fall back, before Patricia joins. Then they were standing, as if they were waiting for something. I see. Why? Ping Yuriko rushed to strike after receiving a revelation. Vermilion Blade. After Veronica's chant, her rapier glowed. Pierce, 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 Eureka was thrown back. Blood was flowing from all over her body. Patricia and I rushed to support her. It's all right. I am not going to die from this. Why? Veronica shook her rapier to clean it from blood. The girl's expression turned dead serious. This skill. Few people know about it. Even less can master it. The puppeteer has come. Yuriko whispered, before losing her consciousness. As the situation turned to worse, I drew the divine steel katana. You wish for death? A voice rang inside of my head. Patricia shivered, so did I. Who the hell are you? Me? It does not matter. Then what do you want? You possess something I own. I wish to warn you. I will kill you, should you turn the blade against this vessel. A chorus of whispers started saying something inside of my head. The words were all the same. She the divine blade. I cooled down my head, and obeyed the demand. I don't feel like this sort of an opponent is feasible for me. Right after I sheathed the divine steel katana, the voices went silent and Veronica's body twitched. When she raised her head, I saw that her eyes were weird. Welcome back, Crazy B. Patricia gripped the sword's handle. V3CH59. The two dolls Veronica's eyes were scary. Her gaze was fixed at me, and her rapier was aimed at my throat. Her eyes appeared to be devoid of life, like eyes of a dead fish. The scene was further appalled by her incoherent mumbling. Pierce in a split second two swords clashed, and Patricia was stabbed in her shoulder. Only because her sword clashed with the rapier's guard she was not wounded deeper. I immediately attacked Veronica and the girl was caught off guard. She had to move away from Patricia to parry me with a knife. Veronica's eyes fixed on me. We stood in place for seconds. Until Patricia swung the sword from above. Ping without even paying Patricia a glance. Veronica parried with the rapier she held in the other hand. With every passing moment, Veronica's gaze was becoming more dreadful. All that was reflected in her empty eyes was me. My name turned into all that she was mumbling. Kurinami 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 The girl's face was distorted by a wicked smile of a maniac, who found a new prey. Patricia was trying to help me by striking from all sides of Veronica but she did not pay any attention to her sister's struggle. Get your hands off her. Patricia swung again. Ping before either of us could process what happened, Veronica switched the hands that blocked us. Now Patricia's sword was stopped by the knife, and my katana was parried with the rapier. All while we both were struggling to press Veronica's blocks. Grandmaster's prowess. V. Kaiwa. The next second after Veronica chanted, Patricia was sent flying overboard with a kick. My side was stabbed by the sword lowering the HP and high but at least Patricia was not drowning. After we were left alone on the deck, Veronica's gaze returned to normal. She shook her head, and suddenly hugged me. It was done faster than I could process. She avoided the katana and made it past my arms, making it look like I was hugging her too. Ha ha ha! Ugh! I was so scared. I thought I lost all control over myself. The sword fell out of my hands and I automatically started patting her back. While I was still confused I did not notice that Veronica's nails were biting into my back. It hurts. 
Dot anywhere. 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 Veronica started mumbling again. And the nails pierced even more. Ping a loud ring happened. A sword fell on the deck. After it hit Veronica's knife. Get the hell away from her. You lunatic. Patricia climbed back on the deck. Veronica glanced behind. And Patricia's legs started trembling until the girl collapsed on the deck with a pale face. When Veronica turned back to me. She was smiling so beautifully that I was almost enchanted by it. Only then I remember that I was held by the girl who can literally decapitate me in a split second. I freed myself from the hug and stepped back. My my little Kieran army doesn't want to play with me anymore Tilda. Veronica smiled but then her expression turned dark as she glanced to the side. There was a pillar of smoke coming after Fairy confirmed she is definitely not here. I understood that it is someone else. Judging by Veronica's expression it might be the doge's flagship. Veronica ran to the railings, and jumped off the ship. I ran to the railings, and saw how the girl was moving away on rays of light. You are. I turned around, and saw that Patricia was crying. I hugged her and started comforting but she continued crying until she cried herself to sleep. I checked on Eureka. Her wounds were no longer bleeding. I carried both of them to a cabin and waited. After Veronica retreated, the Benetian navy retreated too. The pirates clearly seen better times. A handful of ships remained, and neither of them was ready for another fight. With the smoke coming closer from the west, my destroyer squadron prepared to engage. Soon the Vic of destroyers encountered a single ironclad. Four sisters no thirty-one. It was another sunny day in the academy. Nothing foretold troubles. I was finishing another playthrough when the lights blinked. And the next second everything went dark. Including my computer. Ah, just why now of all times? I had to go outside of the room to check what happened to the power. At least here. I did not smell any short circuits. The cables outside were fine too. Everything was connected so I followed the cables up to the dormitory's roof. When I climbed on the roof, I saw that all of the solar panels, aka the only source of electricity, were removed. Iowa, we have an emergency. I phoned her immediately. What happened? Are we under attack? Wait for me. W wait. Do you need an assistance? You require bombardment? Just give me a moment, I'll get outside. Yeah, uh, calm down for a second. The solar panels were stolen. Yeah, you're serious? Yeah, I am. Does she not believe me? Just to make sure, you did see the note on your door? Yeah, no? Good luck, the real world awaits Tilda. Yeah, hey, hey, don't disconnect. I said to the phone itself. I immediately went to check what note she was talking about, and saw this, New Jersey. The next week the solar panels will be removed for maintenance. I hope you will read this at least a day prior. Yours I were oh well. I went for a walk, and headed immediately for the pool. The only body of water where I would could have put the panels. When I arrived there I saw two appetizing buns. Smack Kaya. The buns owner cutely shrieked, and started searching for the culprit. Hiya, cutie by Tilda. You, go die you disgusting freak. I evaded Whiskey's palm of righteous fury. Bang only to get a five shell into my face. Just why did you do this? Wh I saw some cute prominences, and couldn't help Tilda. While Whiskey was boiling and lost in embarrassment, I looked around and saw the missing solar panels lying nearby. Well, now we need to install them back Tilda? As if. She pointed at a single solar panel. It was cleaner than the rest. W well. Where do you think you're going? We I, I, I H have some s stuff to do? At least try to make an excuse, you disgusting lazy bones shut in. We it was now or never. I were class secret technique number one. What? We skirt flip. Run. Run New Jersey, run. Come back you freak. I promise, your death will be quick and painful if you come back now. I have only thirties until I am roasted, and I use the time wisely. F whoosh f whoosh f whoosh I zigzagged like crazy to avoid AP shells falling from the sky, 
until I was far enough to sigh out in relief. And that is why you seek for my wise counseling? That's how it is. Stop moving. I don't like my pillow to be moving around. Since there was nothing to do, I paid a visit to my dragon milf. Her big squishy breasts made a good pillow to support my tired neck. To think this useless reptile has at least one use? I can turn into my dragon form, if you don't like something. The milf grumbled. Go ahead. My guns are itching. The pillow became more docile and comfortable. Soon I grew tired of aimlessly lying on her breasts below, and we started conversing. As it turns out, this dragon is quite a good companion and person. Just minutes later we were already giggling and chatting like friends. I couldn't help being charmed with the dragon's intelligent speech, and nice personality. For a second I even felt like I'm falling for her. Our chatting continued for hours until I fell asleep on her bosom. I can't wait to chat with her more when I wake up. Ringtone you, yes? Done? Really? Thank you. Big sis. What happened? The dragon hugged me. I could feel her warm and gentleness. Get away from me. You useless reptile. Wait for me. My wife us. V3CH60. Encountering west the sea waves were lightly rocking the ship. The steady humming of a steam engine calmed the sailors, as they approached the unknown. The crew of battleship La Grace Real were anticipating the crossing of the Abysmo, a hole in the ocean floor where all kinds of dreads lurked below the surface. They shall be the first to reach the other side of the ocean, and tell their fellow citizens about the miracles beyond. Captain Emmanuel lit up the tobacco in his pipe and peered into the distance. All guns are loaded. All sailors are ready fight at any moment. All sails are set. Whatever may happen, the ship shall not be stopped. At the command of His Imperial Majesty, the ship must not be stopped. Another day has passed, and many more shall. The sun was already high in the sky, signalizing that the noon has passed. Emmanuel was studying the maps to make sure they do not sail off course. Senor Capitan, we saw a smoke in the distance. An aide peeked from the entrance. I will be there in a moment. After the captain finished checking the course, he walked out to the deck. The smoke was clearly visible, and was approaching rapidly. To think there would be a moving smoke? It can't be. His suspicion was soon confirmed. Three ships were approaching from the distance. Their sails were down, and they were emitting pillars of smoke. Could it be they rely on their steam engines so much they arrogantly believe the sails would not be necessary? The unknown battleships were rapidly approaching. Rudder to the starboard. The battleships started turning to show their side to the group of ships. They are going to show their guns and their size to intimidate the possible opponents. This diplomatic grease makes any hothead think more diplomatically. The ships started turning too, now that they were closer. The captain clearly saw that they possess almost no guns, but the ships are made of steel. The Empire's dream afloat. A battleship that is not an ironclad but a true metal ship. For now, few experiments were made, and even though the portion of steel used during the construction is constantly increasing, the true metal ships are but a distant dream, but not to those who made these three beauties, the slim lines of the hulls the elegant simplicity of the masts, the size of the ships, they are perfect. As the captain exhaled his emotions, his attention was caught by flashes of light. The observers already started writing down the signals, and soon they will decrypt. Load powder, we will do a salute of blank shots. At the captain's order, seven guns were loaded. What the hell are they doing? I asked Patricia. Like I know who those guys are. I petted the girl, her tear-stained cheeks barely dried but she was back at the post. A commendable feat for someone who almost wetted herself. Bum 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 The moment I saw the smokes coming from the ironclad, I steered to the port side. Before the turrets of the destroyers turned to engage, I saw that no cannonballs hit the water. Second and third pennants, fire a blank shot into the sky. Bang bang after exchanging salutes, both my squadron and the ironclad maintained steady course. The ironclad started slowing down, 
and I saw that the people on their deck started waving unknown signal flags. I holstered my own signal flags and ordered to slow down. The four ships steadily came to stop, almost perfectly maintaining the formation we had during our mutual examination. The ironclad immediately started lowering a boat. I signaled them that it is unnecessary. Patricia, can you look after Eureka? I will go and do some business. D don't be away for long. I, never mind. I patted her once again, and jumped off the ship. The few hundred meters were crossed very fast, and I jumped on the ironclad's deck. When I raised my head, I saw that rows of rifles were aimed at me. Four sisters no thirty-two. After we dealt with the stampede, we were awarded with an invitation to the king's private resort. The sun was yet to rise when the carriage arrived to bring us there for the entire day of relaxation and fun. All four of us came, each one with a suitcase. Iowa must have taken some meat to roast. Missouri is rigged with weird suits. New Jersey took a stack of blank papers with her. I took a couple of books I wanted to read, and a spare swimsuit. For obvious reason, this will be a great day tilde, sun, beach, and half-naked girls tilde. N.J., you, stay a few thousand feet away from me. Come on, whiskey, don't be shy tilde. I'm your beloved sister, am I not tilde? She approached even closer. N.G., don't tease her too much. I want to survive today's adventure and not apologize to the king afterwards, if you know what I mean. Yeah, the freak only shrugged her shoulders and entered the carriage. The travel itself was unremarkable. We departed before the sunrise, so the outsides were dark. We traveled together, so no exciting talks. At least our weirdos were kept in check by Big Sis. I have no idea why Iowa was knitting all the way. Maybe she's going to make us presents. What is it? Iowa noticed my stare and looked at me. What are you knitting? W well. From her expression, it is yet another scarf. If we did not pity our silly big sis, we all would have thrown her creations into a bin. We arrived at the resort right when the sunrise began. All of us immediately headed to a beach, and prepared to have fun. Don't forget to put on the sunscreen. Exercise before swimming and don't go into the sea after you've eaten. We listened to the usual instructions from Iowa, and finally were ready to forget them a second later. I checked my swimsuit, in case a certain someone made a hole in it. Luckily, everything's fine. As I exited the dressing booth, I was immediately shot. Whiskey, is it that fashionable to wear a swimsuit two sizes smaller tilde? Scram. You. Do you have nothing else to do? Of course I don't. My only mission here is to make sure my cutie sisters will be remembered. This helpless. Now, my cutie pie, make a pose. I prepared to kick her right into the face. Click nice. Now make a cat-like pose tilde. I will hit you, you freak. Click say me out tilde. NJ, MM me out tilde? Holy moly. That's the cutest meow in the world Tilda, as expected of my cutie sis Tilda. S stop, don't pet me, make me an innocent face Tilda. Great. NJ, uh, NG, can you stop bothering Whiskey? I turned round and saw Iowa, who finished changing clothes. Come on, I, it doesn't hurt anybody. NJ, you, go die. I walked, stomped away before the freak does something weird again. Jeez, I, why, why, why did you have to spook her? NJ, stop acting like this and. Yeah, while Iowa was lecturing the freak, I headed to the beach. Mo was already there, making stupid poses and shouting something into the sea. Mo, where are our suitcases? I asked her back. Oh, whiskey, I put them there. When she turned around I almost fainted. She put on a frilly swimsuit of a gothic Lolita, the thing that is absolutely not looking good with her brass eyes. What's up with this stupid swimsuit? It's fine. It helps me maintain the seal, as well as. Hey. It's rude to walk away when someone's talking. Hey. I walked away a sap. 
before she starts dragging me into another weird time wasting. While I was looking for the last book I was reading, something attracted my attention. It was an inconspicuous little magazine. I started reading it. It was a Dujinshai. The drawer is a well-known perverted battleship. Well, I have to give her a credit. She really has a talent. I was immediately engrossed with the story and the characters. It was about two sisters who shared the common dream of becoming superstars. One of them likes heavy metal and is a dear. The other is imaginative but diligent. I almost finished the story, and read until the point when the two of them arrived at a private beach. The second sister's swimsuit was not drawn for an unknown reason. It was shown as if it was lit up by the sun. I just needed to read a few more pages when at some point they started kissing and doing other pervert stuff. Wait a f moment. Why is the second sister wearing a gothic Lolita swimsuit? You damned freak. I will kill that jerk. Today. Right now. Four sisters no 33. The midterm tests are approaching. For some students it means the beginning of the week of terror. For the majority of the students it just means they will have a bit less time for gatherings. Nobles are well educated, and are not concerned with their marks as long as they are not about to be expelled. There is also one more group of students, the ones who don't even care about passing the tests, since they are the ones who make them. While Big Sis is still oblivious of the coming doom. I've finished my share of work and was now free to roam around. After the tests are over, the students will have to practice. This includes extermination of monsters for mages and swordsmen, and healing training for priests and some mages. I am going to participate too. This year I am going to kick the dragon's skinny ass and win all the contests of the practice. For this reason, I need to find someone capable. There are not too many candidates. Since I need someone who won't be dragging me down, the crown prince is the perfect candidature. He was sitting in his classroom and reading a textbook. When I was about to enter, I saw how the platinum blonde approached him, and started talking. The prince was gazing at her, until she started gesturing like an agitated Italian. As the prince's face went stiff from maintaining a smile, I came in, Your Highness. I am ready to go and have a lunch together. Is your invitation still valid Tilda? The blonde glared at me but the prince took my life boy immediately. Of course, Miss Missouri. I am sorry to be departing before we had the opportunity of finishing this conversation. Please, excuse me. Within one second the crown prince was already hiding behind me. We still have an unfinished business with his highness. Get out of my way, commoner. PB, wow, you have an unfinished business, even though you were dumped. Sorry, we've got no time for you. Please, lead the way, your highness Tilda. We left the enraged girl before she had a chance to stop us. Her shouting quickly started reaching us in the hallway. The moment we turned round a corner, we hid. Your highness, come back. The platinum blonde flashed by and only when her shouting became distant enough, we sighed out in relief. I owe you a lot, Miss Missouri. The prince lightly bowed his head. Then, how about you join me as my practice partner? I heard you're quite skilled. Ha ha. I am already paired with the miss. He nodded towards the source of the shouting. Okay. Then why is she trying so hard to catch you? I, I am ashamed to admit that. That I am a bit behind the schedule. The Prime Minister would like me to send him the documents before the exams. Miss wished to remind me about that. The Crown Prince started sweating. My my, to think His Highness, the Crown Prince of this kingdom, is shirking to finish his work Tilda. I started clapping his back. W well. It is because. Uh. I couldn't help smiling at him. If you ask. Big Sismo will help you Tilda. The prince glanced at me with suspicion. My infamy is deeply rooted, so it can't be helped. Come on, I'm the second best amongst ours Tilda. You can trust me Tilda. In response to my grin he nodded, 
and led me to his study. My first reaction when I saw the work ahead was to take a photo of the skyscraper of documents. When I come back, I will attach a caption, when Iowa says she will do her work tomorrow. I am sure the girls will be laughing their lungs out. I started sorting the documents. Somehow I finished everything within an hour, earning myself a photo of the crown prince's beat red face. Seriously, dude? Only then I remember that I failed to find a partner today. Four sisters no 34. Tonight I was going to have some drinks, and watch movies with Angie. Then my plans completely changed. If Mo didn't message me that I should finish the tests for tomorrow. I might have actually not done anything at all. I looked at the clock and sighed from the burden I face. I have less than 12 hours until the tests, and I did not write down even a single question. Is there anybody on the frequency? I sent a radio message to all of my sisters. Not even a single response came back. At least say you are still alive? We are. NJ, then. Nope. NJ. I did not even say anything. You should have done everything while you had time. You reap what you sow. We- You meanies. Have fun Tilda. When you're done, you can come and watch some movies with us Tilda. NJ, the radio chatter stopped, and I was left alone to my misery. I had no time to resent those three, so I started thinking hard on what I can use as a question. If I make the tests too easy. The students will think I am lazy, or will resent my sisters for being too harsh. If I make the tests hard, I will either run out of time, or make mistakes myself. What to do? What to do? Oh, right, the library should still be open. Though it will close in a couple of hours. While the library was still open, I searched for books I can use as a basis for my questions. When I had a good stack of them, I went to the librarian. Sir. I would like to take those books with me. Miss Iwa, do you know that it will take a lot of time to register everything? I am not going to stay overtime just because you wished to read something tonight. You can come tomorrow, and... I knelt and hugged his legs. Please, how about you just register everything tomorrow? I need those books yesterday. Do I appear to be a... No, do not you dare. Stop right now. The last thing I want to see today is a girl crying at my feet. The honor of Iowa class rests upon my shoulders, the threat to it from me not finishing the test is larger than from me crying in front of the librarian. Please. Puppy eyes are the lesser evil too. Get the hell out of here. If tomorrow you will not be in front of the library by the time I come, I will never ever give you any book. I flew out of the library before he changes his mind. With the books my progress became a bit faster. I still have entire six hours of time. So it should be fine for me to rest. Just a couple of minutes of rest. Iwa. Are you there? Mo called me for an unknown reason. Yes, I am. Something's wrong? Have you finished the test? Mo, sweating buckets. Big sis. You do know that you have only two hours to finish, right? Mo, I went to the first aid kit to search for heart medicine, because I am about to have a heart attack. I checked on my test draft, and had an actual heart attack. There are a couple of questions. Everything else was not done. I just need 98 questions more to have enough for the tests. W well. If it takes me a minute to make a question. Then I have enough time, right? Oh, right, before I forget. Big sis, the principal is going to have you put in charge of the summer camp, unless you make the test in time. R, right, I rested more than enough. Out of my way. I ran through the hallway towards the principal's office. Miss Iwu is not going to make it in time. Poor soul. Like a destroyer, I navigated the intricate network of hallways, without slowing down even for a second. Finally. I saw the principal's door. Keep IT open. I shouted to a teacher, who walked out of the principal's office. I flew inside at full speed and my shoes left a long black trace of burnt rubber. Here. I showed the test questions. Congratulations, Miss Iowa. If only you were a minute. Later. And now. 
Thanks to you I will have to search for somebody for the summer camp. I did it. I am still out of ideas for the Ark 3. Please be patient. V3CH61. Empires demand respect. H hello? The sailors glared at me. They were ready to shoot, if I twitch the wrong way. Their bullets will not do anything to me but I don't plan on making a bad impression on those guys. Judging by the symbolics I see around. They are the westerners I should be expecting. I should have expected something like that. At least the tension is still bearable. Some time has passed, and the sailors started to cool down. Nobody was going to actually fire now. Some of them even lowered the guns. One of them stepped forward and said something. I did not understand anything and shrugged my shoulders with confused expression to show that the language barrier exists. While we were exchanging confused glances, a man in uniform walked through the crowd. I leaned on the board behind me, and waved at the man. Everything's cool, dude. What's up? May I ask who you are? I doubt you fell from the sky. The presumed captain measured me from head to toes. T technically I did fall from the sky. He was not amused and frowned. I am from there. I pointed at the destroyer squadron. Are you? Then how come you managed to cross the distance so fast, without a boat? The man's expression softened a bit. I am very good at swimming, or rather I can walk on the water surface. I will pretend I believe your words. Then why are you here? E, it would be a shame to have somebody sunk. How about we have a chat? I am not against. Do you have the authority to talk? E, I am a free soul. My authority comes from me having a ship. Very well, follow me. The captain beckoned me, and led me to a spacious cabin. The man sat into an armchair, and beckoned me to do the same. After I sat down, he stared at me, waiting for something. I had nothing to do, so I started staring at him too. Seeing that I am playing monkey, he straightened his back and started talking. Is this local custom to have a ship's captain have autonomy in government's decisions? E. It's not. We are at war with the government. Those guys tried to kill us a few times. So we are just returning the favor. You rebelled against your sovereign? Impressive. That government must be too weak to maintain order. The captain smiled but it was a smile of contempt. Weak. Ha! Huh? My ships are doing fine. The others. The government's fleet wrecked everybody. Why would anybody cross the ocean just to ask this? The forementioned government did a very despicable thing to our diplomat. We have come to demand an apology. He put the things in not too bad of a way. At least you wouldn't think the Benetians maimed the poor soul. We are a bit at odds with the forementioned government. I bet an armed warship did not come just to wave the flag and say hello. How about we help each other Tilda? The captain grinned. He immediately moved closer and whispered. This may be an interesting offer. It all depends on the conditions of the partnership. E. I can discuss only things related to myself. My immediate superior, however, can talk about a large variety of options. Is this an invitation Tilda? E. It is. The man's grin disappeared immediately. I wonder if my safety will be guaranteed, we have a bit of an experience with the islanders. He nodded towards the east, would I even come if I was worried? I put some trust in you. Now I expect the mutual courtesy. Seeing my unexpected diplomatic move, the man sincerely smiled, I hope that it was a sincere smile, and stretched out his hand for a handshake. Let us hope this proposition will be mutually beneficial. I may have brought a snake on board. I hope you understand that no matter how strong your ship is, I expect the talk of the equals. It all depends on your conduct. For now, we are interested in negotiations. What will happen afterwards, is all up to your side. E. I hope Patricia will not start shouting at him. A diplomatic gaffe would be unwelcome in the current geopolitical conditions, or something like that. I am sure I will rewrite the Arc 3's plan for a couple of times. For now I will stick to the current plan. V3CH62. 
a ship stripped his eye stopped at the battleship's board, is there something wrong? The captain glanced at the ships, I just wonder if being carried in my arms would be fine with you. What do you mean? E. Exactly what I said, you can either swim, or be carried. Miss. Are you crazy? I am not your man to be even pretending to carry me around. E. Then how about you become one tilde? I understood that the joke went a bit overboard only after I said it out loud. Let us pretend you said nothing. Still, are you sure it is the only way? E. As I said, I would like to know the brazen miss name, if possible. E. I'm Kuranami. Simple and straightforward. Like a commoner. The man mocked me. Of course, I have a good retort. A commoner who has a warship squadron tilde? Indeed. Allow me to. The way the man acted before can mean one thing. There will be a long introduction with all of his titles present. We are going to stay like this until the bitter end? Let's be brief and straightforward. Like a commoner. Fine. I am Emmanuel. Captain of Castilia Empire's Navy. Is this brief enough? E. Perfectly brief Tilda. Between a disgraceful princess carried to the ship, and a disgraceful or airing to the ship and climbing, Emmanuel chose the former. Giddy up. Without waiting for the lady in question to prepare, I picked him up and jumped into the water. Wait. E. A second later I accelerated. I glided on the water surface, and when I arrived to the destroyer, I jumped up. We're back Tilda. I smiled to Eureka who was waiting for us. Welcome back, doll. A woman must not carry a man like this, you know? Why, please, no teaching me how to be a Mato ne Dashiko. I put down Emmanuel. Magnificent. He whispered. Today we have a special offer. Explore whatever you want. If you agree to accept one favor of any kind from us. The man visibly hesitated. From the way he looks at the funnels, I decided to sway him with another offer. Everything, including the engine tilde. The man started sweating. Your offer is acceptable. I couldn't help smiling. Then, the hell began. Emmanuel crawled from the frontmost screw of the bow to the sternmost. The questions like, how does it work? What are the fundamental principles behind this device? And the ludicrous please tell me how it can be machined were asked all the time. I had to answer, and pretend to answer what I don't know. I explained everything. Absolutely everything. I explained every screw thread, and why exactly this type of thread was used. I had to explain all of the gear, or rather every damned valve on the steam pipes. I had to freaking show how the damned gearbox worked, in action. By the time we reached the first third of the ship, I was already like a squeezed lemon. By the time we reached the middle, I was weeping. By the time we finally approached the end, I was literally begging him to stop asking and just look. You are damned tech geek. Why can't you be a damned noble you are, and drink tea without asking needless questions? When will I have such a chance? I see a marvel of engineering in metal, and you are saying that it is not important? E. Why would you bother yourself? You must have a bunch of mechanics who would be fine with delving into the complexity of the machinery. Why would you do this? Tell me, how fast can this ship sail? E. 35 knots. I just want this to end. This ship sails almost three times faster than our ship. Just a single piece of those marvelous technologies could accelerate the shipbuilding research by decades. Don't you understand how important it is? E. It is important, and for this exact reason I will not sell any piece, under any circumstances. Then do continue explaining. I shall not stop until I hear about everything. E. For the love of God. I see. Are you tired? Perhaps you want this to stop for today? E. Yes. Then. How about you let me stay on this ship for some time? and check out everything myself. E, yes, just yes, just leave me alone, please. Then it is a deal Tilda. E, while it looks like I was frustrated and agreed without thinking, this guy can be very useful, if he will agree to help. 
then everything should be all right. Alba would be glad to hear they have a steam-powered battleship on their side. V3CH63 Fading hopes several hours after the first contact my squadron and the ironclad docked by the remnants of the pirate fleet. That is, E. As you can see, the Benetian navy was not joking around. They wouldn't agree to talk, unless you show them your strength. My squadron is strong enough to be reckoned with but the pirates I am sided with are on the brink of extinction. Emmanuel glanced at the black demon, and shook his head in disappointment. The pirate flagship was like a Swiss cheese. Its sides were being repaired with planks but that was only enough to cover the holes. Some guns were missing, while the others were lying on the decks without gun carriages. I sent Mozuki and Atsuki, the renamed K2 to patrol the port. Me, Yuriko, Patricia, and Emmanuel headed to Alba to talk about the situation. Alba moved to one of the plundered mansions and was waiting for us, me, to come. When I saw her, Alba appeared to be similar to a ghost. She was tired and worn out. A purple coat was by her side, supporting her when she walked. No need for a pity. Alba brushed off our concerns and sat down. I introduced the new faces to her, as well as told her about the recent events. For example, about Fairy and encounter with the West. I am glad to see you, Signor Emmanuel. I am Alba, the Commander-in-Chief of the Rebels. A, if I understood correctly, you are the one who kept this band afloat all this time? E, I am but a humble ideologist of our force. My daughter Patricia is the one who makes the impossible task implementable. Even though Alba was not in the best condition, both physically and economically, she was giving off a noble aura. Emmanuel felt it too, and kissed the back of her hand. I see. Are there any plans you will be working with? Something feasible with the current condition of your forces? E. Cure an army is our only capable force right now. We need to capture some enemy ships. The men are not an issue. The ships are. I even have an idea where to find some. Senior's assistance will be utmost appreciated. A. If I may, I suggest you focus on establishing a perimeter. This port is isolated, and should your enemies return, you will be caught in here, without a way to retreat. You have no way to predict the enemy's movements, so you must focus on establishing dominance over the area instead of gambling your last forces on capturing ships. Alba started thinking about the suggestion. For a few minutes she appeared to be like Yuriko, who was mostly a decoration by a wall. The woman finally stopped being silent and murmured something with her palm covering her mouth, to avoid me hearing. After she was done, she nodded to Patricia and gave her answer. Perhaps it would be better to do everything at once. We want to start the new operation immediately, while the navy is still running with their tails between the legs. Time is of the essence. I hope you understand. A. I may understand the severity of your situation but I doubt it will help. E. Then do you have other ideas? I looked at Emmanuel. The man was not very interested in the negotiations and waited until we finish. I can call for assistance. The Emperor may bless this place with his grace. The Empire could use new colonies, so. E. Are you suggesting to replace one tyrant with the other? A. Impudence. His Imperial Majesty is benevolent sovereign. Do you think you can just. E. Stop it, guys. We have other issues to be concerned with. Patricia interrupted the heating debate between Alba and Emmanuel. You have to face the reality, Senora. No matter how good these metal ships are, there are few of them. They may cost the enemy colossal losses but they still would be sunk, should they face a superior force. E. Signor Emmanuel, please, step out for a couple of minutes. I should discuss it with the others. A. When we were left alone, Albert drilled me with a glare. I expect you to tell me, what are the chances of us winning, should the Westerners arrive en masse? A. Winning against Benizio, a piece of cake, winning against the West. I doubt even I can make a difference, if there would be a hundred battleships similar to this one. After hearing this, 
Alba collapsed on the chair. Patricia rushed to support the woman. Come what may, we are not even in a corner. We are already dead. Dead do not care about death. I have one last mission for you. Give him our answer. Whatever comes into the beast's head of yours. Patricia helped Alba stand up, and supported her on the way to a bedroom. Four sisters no thirty-five. The peaceful life of the academy is being threatened. A mysterious wave of skirt flipping and underwear stealing occurred. There are many victims, all of which claim that the culprit is none other than New Jersey. The Black Dragon of Iowa class. The problem is, it is me who is blamed. Come on, I, you know I don't do this from the shadows. Your reputation has hit the bedrock, and starts to dig underground. Sorry, NG but even I suspect you. Iwa was seating on a sofa, and reading some of my newest doujinshis. I wish I could find the real culprit faster, I must be the only one who can see panties. As I was saying, please, stop doing those bad things, how about you read the bible instead? Maybe it will help you. Like, I am sick and tired of her lectures, I know better how I want to have my life, says me while playing games. Have you said something? Yeah, nothing. Hey Iwa, how about helping me find the real culprit Tilda? Is she not sitting here? F fine, I will finish this one and we'll go. Yeah, our first stop was the junior's dormitory, where resides the majority of the casualties. The girls there immediately hissed at me. You know that I don't vouch for myself, should you do anything? Yeah, no need to remind me. The first step is collecting the testimonies. I was walking by a hedge, when I felt a breeze there, before I could spot the harasser. They disappeared. Victim 1, I was talking with my friends, when a strange breeze happened. Our skirts were lifted high enough to. Victim 12, can you please show how high Tilda? New Jersey. Yeah, never mind. Please, continue. I hung my clothes by the window and went outside. When I returned, the window was opened and my undergarments were stolen. Victim 17. Next we went to the seniors' dormitories. I think it might be related to the elemental magic. There are few who can practice such precise casting. Or it can be you know who is the pervert. Victim 24. Either it is the hellfire magic of you, sisters or it is a very well controlled wind magic. Victim 41, when we got the clues, we headed to the magic teachers. You think it is caused by an elementalist student? Don't make me laugh. Miss New Jersey just crossed another border of normal. Teacher 1, come on, why me? You have something to say? Yeah, I do. The teachers did not believe me. So we went to the oldest and the most influential of them. The dean of the magic department. An old fart who once was a sage of the kingdom. When we entered his office, I immediately approached him and whispered. Watermelon. Got it. After the dean confirmed, we asked him the questions. First, what were you whispering about? Yeah, it is about the recent assignments of. NG. Yeah, I am too lazy to study magic so I bribed him a bit. We ease, keep it a secret. Iowa facepamed and waved us to continue. Can it be done by elemental magic? Yeah, under very specific circumstances. I know two students who mastered the wind spells well enough for it, and only one of them has the aptitude to cast the spells precisely enough to perform such atrocious things. After the old fart confirmed the possibility, we held our breath in anticipation on whom he will name. The first one is His Highness, the Crown Prince. Of, I would sooner believe that New Jersey has nothing to do with it, than that the Prince is responsible for it. I patted Iowa, who must have fallen for him Tilda. And the second one is Miss Missouri. She mastered all of the explosive magic spells, some of which can produce similar results. Of, I see. Yeah. Thank you. We will be going then. We have more people to ask. Yeah, yes. Please do go. Miss New Jersey, we need to discuss something. Of, when I was stepped out, I passed him an envelope. Everything's in there. As agreed. My mark? A plus. As always, 
A pleasure doing business with you. Of, bang I'm back Tilda. Yeah, I owe a Tilda. W what a pea pleasant surprise. Will you show me what is in that envelope Tilda? Yeah, ha ha ha. I passed her the envelope. She opened it. New Jersey Tilda, my dear sister Tilda. How should I strangle you Tilda? Inside were numerous photos of eyes panties, which I was taking for the past week. Ha ha ha. Mister, can you, please, explain it Tilda? She aimed the main caliber at the old fart. I, I h have no idea. Of, ng Tilda? Yeah, w well. Old fart asked me to give him some material in exchange for marks. Swear you had no idea Tilda. Yeah, as if I would share my treasures. Why would I let some old pervert take pictures of cuties panties, without me? New Jersey. This time you surpassed even yourself. Just what is that supposed to mean? You knew from the start that this man is a pervert, and you remained silent? I shivered. When Iowa surpasses the boiling point, she becomes calm and composed. I had no idea he would do something like this behind my back. I understand. Yeah, let me teach him a lesson for his actions. Go ahead, don't forget to equip the armor. Yeah, at this moment both I and old fart knew. We f up. The only question is, who will kill him first? And will I survive Iowa's wrath? V3CH64 Consolidating the forces when Alba and Patricia exited the room, Emmanuel bid them farewell, and approached me. Is the discussion postponed? E, no. We agreed to receive assistance from your empire. Brilliant. La Grace Ariel will have to return to report this. In two weeks his Imperial Majesty may send a fleet. E, what are the odds you are not going to just abandon us? The odds are great. My report, plus the fact that I shall stay here, should convince everyone that this is a worthy endeavor. I stared at him in disbelief. Wait, you're going to stay here and send the ship back? Just like this? Be patient. Doll. Yuriko stood up and pulled me away for a private conversation. Don't forget. Any assistance is necessary for these people, and this man may be a bridge between a fleet and us. Who knows if they will shoot on sight? Yuriko whispered so quietly that even my ears had to struggle to hear her. Seeing that we are done whispering, Emmanuel coughed. I remember Lady promised to let me explore her ship Tilda. The captain smirked, and without waiting for my response he headed to the ironclad. Eureka and I waited for Patricia to return. The girl came back an hour later. Her face was red, and she avoided laying her eyes on me. How is Alba? I tried to break the awkward silence. Mother is fine. What is going to happen? P. The situation is bad enough to call for some help. I will try to fork out Western help right now to compensate for their ship being gone. My little plan was to make Emmanuel remember the favor he owes me, to make the ironclad leave some of their cannons for the Black Demon's restoration. Afterwards we headed to the pier. The Westerners were busy with work. A port crane was unloading some of the top decks cannons on the pier. A bunch of crates and barrels were waiting to be loaded. Emmanuel was using a spyglass to look somewhere far into the sea. I approached him to ask what is going on. Ah, you are here? Can you tell me? Is that your ship too? The man pointed towards where he was looking, and I saw a pillar of smoke from there. When I rechecked the coordinates from Fairy's last reported location, I concluded that it is her. Yes, are you leaving your cannons behind? It is our gesture of goodwill, that battleship could use some firepower. Emmanuel caressed a long barrel of a cannon, the cannon was looking like the usual muzzle-loaded cannon of Napoleonic era, however, a couple of mechanisms at its back revealed that it is an early breech-loaded gun, it was close to a high-caliber Armstrong gun. Then what are those crates for? I pointed at the bunch of crates and barrels. The crates contain shells, while the barrels hold gunpowder. It would be weird to have the guns without any ammo, would it? Emmanuel smiled, and patted the gun again. Fairy entered the port, and immediately docked by my ship's side. 
I let out Suki Dock by Fairy's other side. The ship could use some minor repairs and spare parts. Fairy was not rushing to disembark, so I boarded the transport. The nurse was at the bridge, coordinating the refueling and resupply. It's good to see you again Tilda. I waved her greetings. She spared me one glance. Don't be so cold to me Tilda. How soon can you build another cure in army class? I approached her control table. I lack the crucial parts for building another ship. I could only build one. A Kazuki class, however, can be produced every two days. F. Then. Is your dry dock free now? The nurse looked at my ship. Then at myself. Repairs are not required. F. It is not for me. I hope your dry dock can be used for retrofitting that sail battleship. When she looked at the black demon, fairy made a wry face. So? Yes. The Kudir nurse turned toxic. And after gritting her teeth she deployed the mobile base. When the local blast furnaces produce some more steel sheets, I will ask fairy to install them. Soon the pirates will have their own sail ironclad propelled by a destroyer towing it. V3CH65, the squadron sets sail for a patrol preparations for the combat were the first thing for us to do after the western ironclad set sail back to its homeland. According to the pirates HQ, Alba and Patricia, the plan is to establish a local naval superiority and make sure none shall enter those waters while the pirates are at their weakest point. Ever since the black demon entered Fairy's dry dock three days ago, she refused to talk to me, even via the radio. While the battleship is being retrofitted with western guns and iron sheets, all of the pirate forces were sent out to clean up after Benizio. The second pirate ship afloat was left to patrol around the port and inspect the merchant ships which occasionally were arriving. My squadron was busy too. Mizuki was left to circle around near the island and sink all submarines and ships that try approaching. Altsuki and I were patrolling 50 nanometers away from the island in a circle. We were at the different sides of the island. To cover more area with the destroyer's speed and firepower we can engage even a small fleet or support each other if a need arises on my ship were all of the main characters me the illustrious kirin army patricia who was with me at the bridge and scanning the surrounding with binoculars yuriko who was meditating at the ship's bow and emmanuel who was reading the maps at the bridge. Since Emmanuel was the only one with actual naval experience, he was advising us on what to do. Currently the area was silent. Neither of the destroyers encountered anything noteworthy. Mizuki bombed a couple of possible submarines, monsters, and I was mostly busy with bombing the passing fish for the seagulls. While there was the calm, I checked the stats. You received 372 upgrade points, 7 copper coins, 5 silver coins, 3 gold coins. IJN Kirin Army, DDL. Upgrade points, 408. Torpedoes, 06. HP, 3700. High minus 100%. AU 90%. 2685 nanometers. I am a bit tired of those exploding torpedoes, that deal more damage to me than to the enemy. I better wait for an opportunity to improve them. I both anticipated a combat, as a chance to get upgrade points, and was hoping we wouldn't encounter anybody. The problems keep piling up and I am the only one who can resolve the imminent doom that is called Benizian Navy. The calm waves of the sea were not foretelling us any issues, at least right now. Our cozy ship was becoming less and less alert as the time went on. I was feeling a bit dizzy. My insides were itching, when Emmanuel was crawling every millimeter of the ship. I couldn't stop him since I would have to suffer from a headache. Patricia was already sleeping. Only Eureka was my available chat companion but the woman was meditating. It was awkward to distract her for my selfish desire to have a chat to spend the time. I was awkward not exactly because she is thinking about some world important problems, rather I was awkward because I barely talked to her for a reason beside her advices. As I gathered the courage to bother her, I got a contact on the radar. 
a couple of ships were trying to slip through the patrol. They relied on the cover of the dusk, and carefully tried not to attract attention. Since my navigation lights were all on, I expected them to see me by now. A wooden hull would not be detected as good as a metal one, so they should have already entered the visual range. I continued sailing at the same course, and did not change my speed. The ships continued sneaking by, their course would cross mine only when I would already pass by. They are trying to stay undetected, good for them. When they approached close enough, I started turning to have all guns on them. Seeing that they were noticed, the ships did not think for long, and opened fire. Splash splash ping when my guns finally turned at them. It was only a matter of time. Bang 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 kaboom one of the galleons exploded, leaving behind a bright flash and fire. Bang 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 I fired again, and again, and again. The escorting frigate was doing its best to avoid my shots. For now, it was doing it remarkably well. Bang 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 kaboom not that it would have a lot of chances. Four sisters no 36. I reached for another box of patches. Stop twitching, will you? I tried to catch my stupid big sister, who was covered in scratches and bruises. I already spent quite a few patches to cover her damage. But, I glared at her. You brought this upon yourself, didn't you? Instead of responding, she went silent. Usually this freak starts doing all sorts of weird things whenever I am near but today she is unusually quiet. It may be related to her being shelled by Iowa for the past few hours, however, she usually bounces right back in the moment. Just what the hell did happen between you two? What perverted freak thing you did for Iowa to be so pee off? The freak turned her head away. I clawed her head, and forcefully turned it back to face me. After all I still have a few scratches to cover there. It. Uh. N.J., just say it, damn you. It's not like you can surprise me. W. Well, I tried to sell eyes pants ash oats for good marks. N.J., N.J., question mark N.J., you are the worst kind of trash I've ever seen. Didn't you say you won't be surprised? N.J., I'm finally done. Get away from me, you freak. Come on Tilda. You saw my naked butt, so you must take the responsibility Tilda. I felt how my eyes filled with blood. Just who in the world would be interested in your skin eh? Kaya Tilda, Whiskey started saying such perverted things about me Tilda. What if my lil sis goes out and starts saying everybody what she saw Tilda? I fear I'm in danger Tilda. Hee hee hee. How about we talk this through? N.J. Die. Hee hee hee. N.J. Boom 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 before she was turned into dust, New Jersey managed to jump out of the window. Come back, you freak. I will find you, and then... I have no idea what I would do. I might as well bury her alive. W. Well, searching for her is better than just turning into a vegetable like she did. I was going around the academy, and searching for the freak. Come here, New Jersey Tilda. I have the union's flag Tilda. It's not like I warned them just for her. It is a necessary evil. That's it. Come here, you damned freak Tilda. I promise. It won't hurt for too long Tilda. While I was passing by a gazebo, I saw a movement in the bushes. Something rushed away in there. Boom 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 New Jersey Tilda. Come out Tilda. I promise. I'm not angry Tilda. Boom 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 come out Tilda. Boom 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 I checked around, and saw only pieces of a rabbit. While I hoped I would see a bruised freak there. I am not concerned Tilda. I will just keep searching until I find her and rip her heart out, because, ah, uh, I already forgot why I even want to kill her today, not that it would stop me from searching for her tilde, while I was passing by one of her nukes, where she ambushes for short skirts, I saw Mo on approach, hi, Mo, what's up, what are you doing out here, she waved me back with her weirdo staff, me, I'm just searching for the freak, ah, uh, I see. What did she do now? Mo, I don't even remember. I shrugged my shoulders. Mo looked around, and said, Then how about we search for her together? I have some business to do with her too. 
fine by me. The two of us started searching for the freak all over the academy, in the end we both had to accept that she surely knows how to hide, it is an unexpected skill for a battleship but she is something unexpected too. Hey, big sis, have you seen New Jersey? While I was thinking about what to do, Mo message to Iowa, New Jersey, she's right here, with me. Did something happen? Yeah, wait, how long was she with you? The entire day, ever since you fired at her. I facepamed, big sister's room was the last thing that came to my mind when we thought about the freak. I entered Iowa's room, and the freak was right there, lying on the carpet with a phone in her hands. You freak of a sister. Oh, hey, uh, whiskey, Motilda. She waved and smiled, as if she had no idea how much I wished to kick her right now. How are you doing, NG? How about a spa tilde? Mo crouched by her. Nah, I'm too lazy for it. NJ, I crouched from the other side. Hello tilde. Hello tilde. Without even looking at my face, New Jersey lifted the hem of my skirt. You see, Whiskey wishes to kill you. I'm sure her desire was reinvigorated right now. So, you can either die right here, right now, or, you can go with me tilde. Mo. Miss Stars and Stripes, how about you keep me some company tilde? I was dumbfounded, not only this pervert so shamelessly gazes at my underwear, with me seeing it, she also decided to ignore her only path to salvation. Hey, Whiskey, look at this. She showed me the screen of her phone, there was a picture of a good restaurant in the capital, what do you think about stuffing your belly tonight tilde? NJ, W well, I. It's not like I'm against it. T this time I will let her go. Uh, only because I heard this restaurant has good pork. V3CH66, a certain whaleboat together with the rising sun. The entire ship came back to live again. The seagulls woke up and started flying around. Patricia wobbled to the bathroom to wash her face and Emmanuel walked into Eureka and now they are playing chess, I was not getting tired even after standing at the steering wheel for the entire night, and the day prior, Atsuki did not encounter anything noteworthy, my destroyers only bombed some monsters that approached the area, second pennant, maintain vigilance, I will be leaving the patrol for some time, orders confirmed, where are you going, Eureka called from behind, while she was distracted, Emmanuel tried to cheat. I can understand him. This woman already learned everything about chess, and nobody can defeat her. Only Alba is capable enough to pose her a challenge. Poor man's hand was caught immediately, even though Yuriko didn't even draw her eyes away from me. I will try to catch some monsters. The seagulls are starting to grow hungry, and I worry that they will make us a huge storm. If we won't feed them. The woman giggled. They were going to Tilda. Why, we sailed for an hour until I picked up something on the radar. There were a couple of flying objects. Their sizes were different from the wyverns we encountered before. Patricia was still in the bathroom, and I needed her help right now. I might as well prank her. Ring. I set off the alarm. Moments later the door to the bridge was opened and a girl in nightgown with a soapy face rushed in. What surprised me more than her appearance was the fact that she already had the sword in her hands. Are you sleep hugging the sword? That's not important right now. Who attacked us? She rushed to the windows and started scanning the surroundings. I feel that my karma is low enough to receive a splendid punishment. W well. I J just wanted to ask if you know what those are. Patricia's expression immediately became dark, she stomped to the radar screen and looked at it. Flying fish, did you call me like this just for this reason? The girl started shaking me. When her fury subsided, she returned to the bathroom, and I prepared to shoot down some fish. As we sailed closer, I wished to curse Patricia for her reaction. What I initially thought to be a large winged fish were a ridiculously huge winged fish. The radar only showed their bodies, not even their wing fins. One such fish should be enough to lavishly feed a small household for an entire month. K. Sanchioso. Remarkable. 
Emmanuel said something but I understood only the last part of the phrase. You know something about them? Yes, a long time ago there were many such fish flying around. Then we started hunting them, and so they went extinct. Few of them can be seen in the hindmost backwater colonies. E, then they are edible, flock, take off. Of course, the seagulls did not hear me shouting. Instead, they heard the gunshots. The flying fish were slow and bulky, and they didn't care about me approaching, since they were this close. I prepared to farm some points. Boo 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 I fired hundreds of shells and bullets but the two flying giants were not falling down. They soaked in so much ammo that I started to be worried about my autonomy reserves. Boo 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 The guns fired all of the ammo clips that were lying nearby. Only then I managed to shoot down one of the fish. The second wounded giant was desperately trying to float away. Then my stomach rumbled. The fish's fate was sealed. Bang 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 while Patricia and Emmanuel were dragging the floating bodies to the ship, and the seagulls were sticking to the bodies like bees. I checked the stats. Ding you received 334 upgrade points, 10 copper coins, 9 silver coins, 7 gold coins IJN Kirin Army, DDL. Upgrade points, 242. Torpedoes. 06 HP 3673 High minus 99.9% .9 Damage control compensation minus 0.1% AU minus 66% 1991 nanometers 5 dual turrets full upgrade 19 dual torpedo mount Oxygen increase caliber 0 100 improve mounts 0 250 torpedo storage I 0 1000 a blonde girl was sitting at the desk the office was dark not only because the curtains were closing the window and the only source of the light was a small wax candle on the desk the entire atmosphere of the palace turned grim the current acting doges you have something to tell me the head of the intelligence department shivered the veteran spy who assassinated many people when he was young, was trembling in fear when he saw his new liege's expression. He silently shook his head, and cautiously glanced to the side, to the side, where on the wall was a glass coffin with an embalmed body of the previous doge. Nobody knows why she did it, nobody dares to question it. Since there were cases of officials and servant disappearing, the girl approached him. Her face was twitching weirdly. Flash her face was distorted. It looked like she was fighting with herself but it was not the main concern the spy had. The tip of the rapier stopped a millimeter away from his neck. Then her expression calmed, and she sheathed the weapon. You understood your task Tilda? The spy vigorously nodded. Do not fail me Tilda. V. Only when he exited the office he could finally fall on the floor and start breathing. Four sisters no 37. Yesterday we arrived at a seaport. The king asked us to participate in meeting with foreign envoys, and showcase ourselves as his trump card. All but one of us refused to do it. Usually it means that we agree on not doing it. However, there is a special clause, in case one of us really wants to do something. Unless we reach a consensus, we agree to keep everyone else's wishes in mind. The question was whether we should join, or not. Only one of us said that we should. Is this so important for you? We could have relaxed today, without having to waste our time on smiling at envoys like idiots. We- Of course it is. Do you think I have a chance at taking a pants a shot of a princess every day? NJ. The king was wise enough to offer a foreign princess lifted skirt for NJ. Otherwise we would have had full consensus on ignoring today's event. Just why are you more interested in her than in me? We have you said something Tilda? New Jersey glued herself to whiskey. You misheard. Stay a few thousand feet away from me. Big Sis and I smiled at them. While we were watching the doves flirt, the greetings began. The envoys approached the king, and greeted him. Then, the envoys sat at the guest chairs. The aforementioned foreign princess was distracted by the king, 
It was said that she arrived to be wed to one of his sons, the king inconspicuously gestured, and one of the princes, a well-known womanizer, approached the princess. The prince approached from behind, and while the princess was distracted by the king, he lifted the hem of her dress high enough to be visible. Click 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 Angie's trigger finger started working immediately when she was done. The prince lowered the hem. You guys are quite a bunch of criminals, huh? The girl didn't even notice. Now that the king and the princess were done, they sat down too. The next part was the most esteemed greeting to the king, and to the envoys by both sides, also known as let's flex our muscles in front of each other, while pretending to be friends. Let's go, girls, NG, stop giggling. At Big Sis' command we prepare to sortie. Several lines of battleships passed in front of the esteemed guests and the monarch, then several more. Then everybody grew tired of this, and some wyvern riders flew by. When all of the guests grew sick of this, the four battleships showed up on the horizon. A line of the kingdom's trump cards, when we feel like it started approaching the port. Even from the distance our camouflages were clearly visible. I was classic battleship camo of the war. Wisconsin's battleship gray, New Jersey's blue stripes, and anime girls on all of the flat surfaces, and my gray white and black. As we approached the seats, the public roared in cheers. America, F yeah. NJ, watch your radiograms, New Jersey. Yeah coming again, to save the MF day, yeah, we stick to the communication rules, yeah, America, f yeah, nj, America, we f yeah, nj, freedom's the only way, yeah, stop the chatter, keep the course steady, yeah, killjoy, we all sent the same message, the formation slowly approached the port, and we started turning. While Big Sis was busy with keeping this circus sailing straight, we prepared to greet everybody. New Jersey, is your A turret's gun elevation malfunctioning? Why is the gun rising? Yeah, it is a minor issue. Don't sweat it. NJ, copy that. Yeah, New Jersey peeped out from the bridge, and flashed the lights to show she's ready. Whiskey did the same. Stand down. Before we could do anything, Iowa spotted us. Come what, Matilda? I lit the magic formations on the ship. The entire battleship glowed with crimson, and the mana accumulation began. Or so the law says. PFFT, what's up with those Christmas lights? NJ, just how long it took you to make all of this? We girls, you're the worst. Yeah. The Iowa class circus was sailing right in front of the seats, drawing all of the attention. Go Tilda. Boom 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 our small salute livened up everyone, expect for Iowa. V3CH67. Searching for the sea terror after several days of patrolling the Black Demon was retrofitted. The pirate flagship now has two times less guns per side but has better armor. Also, she is barely capable of moving. The sailing rigging was removed, and now this ship will be moved by towing it after a destroyer. A floating battery is a good idea. I wish we could fit a steam engine in. E, a full armored ironclad is still better than nothing. Mizuki will be towing the Black Demon until Fairy builds another ship. The dry dock is now free, and Fairy receives shipments of steel from the blast furnaces. She claims that it will take her two days to build a new Kazuki class ship. I am happy that I won't spend money to build ships but I will still have to buy new torpedoes. While I was thinking about the looming torpedo procurement crisis, Emmanuel stopped looking into the distance, and faced me. The fleet would arrive soon. Can I ask you to help clearing a path for them? I felt like it was not a request. Clear a path from what? Have you encountered something problematic that could stall the fleet's passage? Yes, there is a sea dragon. A single ship can run away from it without issues but when a fleet passes, they cannot accelerate and maneuver that easily. E, then let's set sail. If that is the same huge dragon thing that almost hurt me twice, 
I would be a glad to see how it will fare against my new torpedoes. I surely did not do it for monetary reasons. The subjugation fleet gathered soon. Two Kirin Army class destroyers, one Akazuki class destroyer, and one makeshift ironclad towed boat. Two days later we reached the abyss. The weather was good, and the sea was full of fish. The seagulls were happy and did not cause us any issues. We were paying a lot of attention to feeding them only because we have a very problematic ship that would capsize if there are large waves. It costed us bombing several large schools, and me begging Yuriko to beg the seagulls to avert all storms nearby. Now that we were in the open sea with the floating battery, I hoped it will prove to be worth it. All stations were monitoring the surroundings. We formed a triangle with a large distance between each destroyer, all for the sake of broadening the sonar coverage. Despite all of our efforts there were no monsters here. The squadron continued sailing around but encountered nothing. According to Emmanuel's maps we already crossed the abyss, turned around, and were on our way back. As the days went on, I had more and more ships in my reserves, until I had two more ships to deploy. The triangle turned into a long V formation. Destroyer Squadron, second ship, K2 Atsuki, third ship, Yoizuki, fourth ship, Haratsuki, fifth ship, Hanezuki. In reserve, zero ships. Only when we crossed the abyss and returned to the eastern side, Haratsuki reported a sonar contact ping. All pennants, except for Yuki, form up on the leader. Orders confirmed, ping. Everybody was called to the bridge. Is it starting? Patricia was agitated, and had her sword sharpened to the level when it could cut a paper that falls on it. Ping. Finally, it is. Can you help me message the ironclad? Sure thing. P. The ironclad was warned to drop their anchors, and prepare to fight. Their top deck guns will have to be rolled around during the fight. Yuzuki let go of the towing cables and rejoined the squadron. Pin all pennants. Maintain 30 knots. Our speed is limited by the golden ships. The platinum ship would be able to sail faster. Ping the squadron prepared to fight, and turned after me to show the broadside. Pin all pennants. Fire depth charges on my mark. Ping 3. Ping 2. Ping 1. Fire. Ping 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 pom pom the charges scattered around, like a rain of barrels. From several kilometers I saw how the barrels hit the water, leaving splashes around the target area. Then, a square kilometer of water lifted into the air. From there, a huge green head flew out of the sea. Ra All pennants, fire at will. V3CH68, the conqueror of the abyss bang 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 all guns opened fire. The monster was not going to let itself be shot and started diving again. I ordered the destroyers to bomb it, while I launched the first salvo of torpedoes. Splash pom pom the depth charges could only force the monster to surface again. Luckily, the torpedoes were right where I needed them to be when the dragon surfaced. However, they narrowly missed. Bang 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 using that little time frame we had, the ships fired at the dragon, and we scored several hits. I tried to repeat torpedo attack again. I could have used the entire squadron's torpedoes but then I wouldn't get my points. Greed kills. This time it can be the exact outcome. Splash pom pom the torpedoes flew into the water with grace. The traces headed right towards where the dragon is. It surfaced, after being deafened by the depth charges explosions. ra -a. Then, boom boom ra -a. The dragon's mighty body fell back into the water. Ping 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 by NG its movements became chaotic. As if it was struggling to stay afloat, the torpedoes delivered a catastrophic hit. Still, the beast was not dead yet. Pom pom with every missed shot and charge, the dragon was approaching. I couldn't let ourselves turn away, since we would miss most of the guns and depth charge projectors. All pennants, fire depth charges. Orders confirmed, pom pom splash the deaf and sea dragon was forced to emerge but the timing was off. The torpedoes were still far away, and they had little to no chances of hitting. Bang 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 I was firing all guns available. 
just for the sake of stalling the dragon, it already submerged, when the torpedoes were approaching it, damn you, I'll gut you like a fish, boom boom two pillars of water shot up, the pinging of the sonar started fading, until all I could hear was the sound of the destroyer's propellers, I, I guess it's dead? I might be raising a flag but I had the reasons to consider it dead, it soaked in four torpedoes, not every battleship would survive this much, in the end, fortune did not spare the sea monster, its huge body was left to sink into the abyss, the squadron successfully finished off a dragon, and we headed back home, I crossed my fingers and toes, and prayed to have enough upgrade points to improve a lot of stuff, Ding you received 500 upgrade points, hits, 124 upgrade points, firing, 360 upgrade points, torpedo hits, 0.9 modifier, 22 copper coins, 20 silver coins, 16 golden coins IJN Kirin Army, DDL, upgrade points, 76, torpedoes, 0.15, HP, 3700 high minus 100 percent au minus 17 percent 516 nanometers 25 millimeters triple a mounts one full upgrade 25 millimeters single a a mounts two full upgrade 13 millimeters deck mounts full upgrade five dual turrets full upgrade 21 quintuple torpedo mount Oxygen increase caliber, 0 100 torpedo storage I, 0 1000 depth charge mount, stern rails plus Y guns plus ASW mortar, depth charge type, proximity fuse, full upgrade, now I am fully rigged for combat, I only need points for storage, why are you so happy? P, look at my new toys tilde. I led Patricia to my torpedo mounts, instead of puny dual mounts I now had five, tubes, I now have three more torpedoes to miss when something goes wrong, I can now waste entire fifteen gold for a single boat, if only I had those fifteen gold, I only need that much to start the torpedo production on Ferry's mobile base, since I have some time. I might as well try bombing some more monsters, for the rest of the day I did not encounter any monsters, however, I found a lonely merchant, who agreed to reward me for escorting his pitiful soul back to the safe port, for an affordable price of some small coins, and seven gold, my next step in money cadging was asking Patricia for some pocket money, w well, if you need it so much, I, I'm not against it, the girl blushed, and handed me a small bag with money, to my greatest regret, there was only one gold, when my head turned towards Yuriko, the woman showed me that she is completely broke, Emmanuel showed me a bunch of bank notes, I gracefully accepted them, and exchanged for three gold, I still had not enough gold, we need more gold, is she alright? E, just accept that she is weird sometimes, P, Four sisters no 38, after another lesson, I finally had some time to sit down and rest, teaching is one of the hardest things I've ever done, aside from taking care of my sisters, all of this preparation, teaching, and reviewing are killing me, I relaxed on the chair, and could finally doze off, big sis, how about you come with us, for a lunch, when I opened my eyes, I saw Mo hanging over me, sorry, Mo, I'm going to rest, have fun Tilda, don't fall asleep, big sis Tilda, she grinned, and rushed out of the classroom, if I recall my today's schedule, this was my last lesson for today, when I was about to drift into the dreamland, the door opened and somebody entered, ha, huh? again, just where is he hiding, when I glanced at the source of the noise, I saw the platinum blonde and the blue haired girl, this was supposed to be his last hideout, my lady, perhaps we can ask a teacher to help us? Before I was noticed, I dived under the desk, you are right, do you smell this, this, burnt, pb, indeed, my lady, it is coming from there, go away, go away, go away, I twitched, when I saw a shadow appear near the desk, the smell grows stronger, could it be that commoner? 
PB, I heard that these commoners happen to participate in the teaching process. BH, the shadow become larger, and then a head showed up from above the desktop. H high? After I was forced out of the hiding, I was defenseless. You, I present you with a fabulous opportunity. Go with me, and help me find His Highness, the Crown Prince. PB, W well, uh, follow me. Without waiting for an answer, the blonde walked away with the blue-haired girl in tow. While they were walking, I had time to call for backup, as to be expected from our gutless big sis Tilda. Of course, the backup was as mean, as they always are. Can you poke me a bit later? I really need some help. I happen to know where the prince is. He should be in the library. We Thanks, Whiskey Tilda. At least some of my sisters happen to have conscience. Uh, why you can know what? The girls turned around and stared at me. The blue-haired girl, however, hid behind the blonde, and was cautiously peeking from behind her back. Speak, commoner, I permit you. PB, thanks, I guess. Whiskey says the crown prince is in the library. For a second the blonde appeared to be delighted. Then she murmured something, and her mood became worse. Let us head there at once. She stomped to the library. We stopped in front of the library. Enter and search for his highness. If you manage to distract him, I will be pleased with you. I'm a teacher, you know, I'm kind of. An actual teacher, you know, are you not supposed to have at least a bit of respect? I entered, and started searching. The crown prince was found soon. He was sitting on the floor, somewhere in the advanced magic books section. Your highness, good day to you. R. A. Miss Iwa, good day. Seeing me, the young man immediately stood up and kissed the back of my hand. How are you? Why would your highness sit here? Is this a common practice? Ah, uh, this? You see, I am. CP, good day to you, your highness. May you forever be blessed by the god. The platinum blonde appeared from behind me. The prince's expression turned sour. I am delighted to see that your highness started to be serious with there. The blonde abruptly stopped, and approached the small stacks of books the prince was reading. She squatted, and picked up one of the books. The title was Healing Magic, and its unconventional uses in the contemporary reality of advances of medical science. The girl was delighted, and smiled. Then she saw the title of the book below, Your Highness Tilda. She showed the book, Adventures of Seven Heroes, Volume 4. It was definitely not a learning manual, so to speak. I, I can explain it. The crown prince started backing off the blonde but to his regret I happened to be in his way, and while he was tarry, the blue haired girl cut off his last way to retreat. I am so glad to find you here Tilda. I already prepared additional material for your highness to be taught Tilda. My father would be delighted to see you come today Tilda. The blonde passed him an envelope with invitation. At least I was let go, and could finally disappear before they remember about me. V3CH69, the first counterattack after we returned from the dragon slaying, we had some time to rest. According to Emmanuel, the Western fleet should arrive within one week. Until then we might as well do something. I only needed to convince Alba that it is going to be useful. And so you propose to start acting? The enemy had a lot of time to prepare and regroup their forces. I still need someone to protect our last base. A. I understand that you need some help. But what stops me from leaving a ship to protect, while the rest of us goes to cause some trouble? I'm sure the enemy will be drawn to us. Funny thing is, mother, unless we start attacking, the doge will be sending waves after waves. I am sure the next batch of battleships will be finished soon. We might as well strike one of the shipyards, and capture the unfinished vessels. Suddenly, Patricia supported my suggestion. Even if you capture those unfinished ships, they are unfinished and would lack most of the rigging. You already lack the guns and other equipment. What is the use of exchanging the secure location for a handful of useless driftwood? On the other hand, Emmanuel was against it. Now the question was, 
Would Alba will side with me? Don't look at me like this. I am not sure if this is a good idea. You may scout what is going on but don't take all of the ships. Do not attack, unless necessary. A. Can we take some sailors with us? In case we find an unprotected shipyard. Alba groaned, and waved her hand to show that we should go. In this operation I will have only two ships. Aside from my destroyer, I will take Hatsuki. On the two ships there was enough space for a few hundreds of sailors. They will be the skeleton crews of the possibly captured battleships. The next night we were ready to set sail. With all of the lights turned off, the two destroyer leaders set sail towards the closest Benetian colony. We left the defense perimeter without being spotted by anybody. Until the morning we did not encounter enemies. It is weirdly silent. Are they not patrolling? There is a small chance they decided we are in no shape to harass the shipping. How about? I shook my head before Patricia finished. We better stick to Alba's order, this time. Imagine yourself. We arrived to the colony, and there are rows of newly finished battleships, all waiting for us to claim. We both grinned. Ping here we go. Let's sink a sub. Ping Pom I fired the ASW mortar after the first strike. The sub went silent. As we passed over its last known location, I noticed that there are no traces of destruction. Even if it was a monster, there would be something, even after its body sinks. Splash I dropped the depth charges. Boom 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 now the scraps started rising from the deep. The new proximity fuses proved themselves a formidable enemy for any sub. As the ships passed the first archipelago, we entered a trade route. It was unpatrolled, and it was empty. My jolly Roger was idling without any victims in the visible range. When we were one day away from the colony, my surface detection radar found a small group of ships. As we approached, I saw that they are two battleships with several frigates, as long as they give us the money, second pennant, full readiness. Orders confirmed, bang 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 my range estimations were off, so the shots splashed in front of the ships. By that time, we were already seen. The next salvo was avoided too. Bang 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 with the luck not on our side, the squadron started closing the distance. Bang 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 we were still far enough to be safe from any gunfire. Bang 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 five salvos, all missed. Don't cry, you're an army, you will surely hit them. P. Not everything goes as you wish. Why? Bang 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 after I let the Benetian ships approach closer. I scored two hits on a frigate. Meanwhile, Atsuki already sunk a battleship purely with her gunfire. Bang 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 90. Shots later, I scored entire four hits. It was enough to finish off the poor frigate. Meanwhile, Atsuki turned the second battleship into a colander. I was filled with righteous fury and opened fire at the other frigates. Bang 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 kaboom bang 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 kaboom after a bunch of misses, I scored two consecutive kills. Second pennant, full speed ahead. It is the time to strike. Orders confirmed, four sisters no 39. Two schoolgirls were chatting in front of the main building. The weather was nice, and because it was the lunch break, the surroundings were quiet. Only occasional groups of people were wandering around in search of a good spot for them to chat and eat. You heard it too? That actor is so good, that if people were to be arrested for being perfect, I absolutely agree. When he started that monologue, I felt like the entire hall teared because of the emotions. I cannot help feeling sorry for the industry. To think that he was an orphan. Indeed. If only there was a support for the young talents. Still, he is too good. How about we pay a visit to the theatre the next weekend? I shall make the necessary arrangements. Why do I feel chilly? The girls looked behind. Don't mind me, keep talking about the theatre Tilda. Kyra? If only I knew back then, that those two were daughters of two prominent dukedoms. Which is why I must ask you again. Please do teach your sister some manners. The principal was ripping and tearing, even though his speech was very calm. And he never raised his voice. Iowa was still on the brink of crying. 
It was as if she is the one who's going to be scolded. I will talk to her. Yeah, I am sincerely grateful. Miss Iowa, I can only rely on someone like you. The principal held her hands, until she stopped sobbing. When she calmed down, she grabbed my hand and we left the principal's office. Right after the door closed, she faced me. New Jersey, why can't you be nicer to people? Tears started flowing down her cheeks immediately. I am sorry, big sis. The last thing I need right after being scolded, is Iowa crying. I promise, I will not do anything lewd. If you say so. She quietly nodded, and left. Well, enough is enough. I am sick of Iowa's nagging, the principal's nagging, the king's begging, and Whiskey's kicking. If I stop looting all of the skirt-wearing pretty creatures, then maybe my life will become easier. On my way back to the room I was waving to all of the girls on my way, as the sign of peace. They were dashing away with terrified expressions, and some were trying to hit me with their purses. While I was walking on the alley, I encountered Mo. She was sitting on a bench, and reading something. When she saw me waving around to the people, she stared at me. Her eyes were opened as widely as plates for turkey. Good day to you, Mo Tilda. I passed by her and continued on my way to the dorm. For the rest of the day I was stuck in my room, playing Fleet Sims Wii. Yeah, Mo, we use for learning and training while we are at the academy. The next day I diligently studied, and politely greeted all of the people. The girls kept on shrieking whenever I approached, or they held the hems of their skirts, but I continued sticking to my other day's self-promise. During my evening stroll, I walked into a cutie pites and whiffy tilde, hoff my cuffy pite tilde? Be gone, evil spirit. She held a cross in front of me. Seeing that she's still on guard, I left her. Her dumbfounded expression was slightly worth the missed opportunity. On the third day I started seeing people give way to me. Not in the revered way but in the way I don't wish for her to approach me. In the evening I once again headed immediately home instead of my usual skirt fari. The alleys were empty. All of the people disappeared from there. When I started to wonder where everybody is, I heard someone approach me from behind, as I was about to turn around. Smash is she dead? A man in a white coat approached me. If she's not, then I shall help her. Whiskey poked me with a frying pan. I'm worried that the hit was too severe. The man started touching the bump on the back of my head. Please, tell me that it has cured her. We cured me? We cannot be sure, Mississippi. Curing psychic disorders in such a way was never done before. What? Did you f say I am mental? Like, really? P please. W wake up. We my head was put on something very warm and soft. 90% sure it was her lap. I quietly sniffed the lap. Whiskey started quietly sobbing, and caressing my head. I am sorry, Mississippi. It looks like her madness cannot be healed in such way. You. I jumped up. Incomprehensible elaborate East Coast swearing accent. Even more incomprehensible but still elaborate East Coast accent. I tried to strangle the charlatan doctor. Then I felt a glare on my back. When I turned around, I saw how the entire broadside of sixteen guns was aimed at me. You, you, were, awake? We, ha ha ha. You, die, you freak. We, smash spoil rest in pieces. Frying pan. You served your country faithfully, until the end. Collapse, V3CH70. Black Cat Ops when we were a couple of hours away from the colony. I ordered Atsuki to slow down. I had to move the entire pirates force to Atsuki. Emmanuel was transferred there too, while Yuriko and Patricia were picked up by me. I summoned the gear, and carried the girls towards the colony at full speed, while Atsuki is slowly moving. A couple of girls are harder to spot than two 100 plus meters warships. We will cause some havoc before the enemy even has a chance to set sail. Our incursion was successful, and nobody spotted our approach. We sneaked our way through a town, and reached the colony's port. Jackpot. Patricia started drooling at the sight of battleships, 
There were six battleships, and all of them were docked. Patricia, how good are you in combat? Better than you are. P, okay, listen, if each of us takes on two of the ships, we might capture them before the true fun begins. She thought this through for a minute, before approving my idea with a nod. Then what? We may capture the ships but we will then need to hold back the enemy soldiers. We don't have enough shields to keep them busy. Why, as old-fashioned as ever, they would shoot the shields as easily, as you win against Emmanuel. Yuriko glanced away in embarrassment. Let me guess. You're going to do something impossible? Patricia glared at me with suspicion. You know me well Tilda. The girl faced We waited for a bit, to make sure we do everything at a perfect time. When a patrol passed by the ships, we moved out. Yuriko sneaked in the closest two ships. Patricia took the middle ones, and I, as the sneakiest one, took the furthest group. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky cat, what's that? A guard heard me right after I crawled by him. You saw nothing. Cut I shook the blood off the blade, and continued crawling. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky cat. I sneaked to the boarding ramp of the first ship. When I climbed the ship, I saw that it was unguarded. I made my way to the ladder, and climbed down throughout the ship. The entire ship was empty. The only guard it had was already biting the dust. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky cat. I crossed the space between the two ships and was right below the second ship's ramp. Who's there? The two guards hurried to attack me. Slash pierce in a single leap I cleared the entrance. Sneaky cat, I'm a sneaky cat. I safely boarded the ship, and started searching. The guards on the ship never saw me coming. After I cleared the upper deck, I started searching below. Once again, the ship was empty inside. Empty in the meaning that it had no people, all of the necessary supplies are there, the guns are there too, just come and man them, woo you woo you woo. while I was celebrating my clean job, I heard a horn, a certain someone raised the alarm, by the time I ran up to the upper deck, the purple coats were already flooding in the harbour, it was the time to shine. Bang 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 boo 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 bum I was mowing down the hordes of infantry. An entire twenty soldiers were killed before the enemy stopped rushing in like idiots, and sieged us. Ping 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 bang 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 while we, I, were keeping the enemy away, Atsuki finally approached close enough to open fire. I made her hold fire until she is close enough. The civilian casualties will not be a good thing. We will have to capture this place, and civilian unrest will be a problem. When the purple coats were suppressed by gunfire, I saw how the certain woman and girl rushed at them with their swords. Just don't get hurt, have fun. Patricia turned round on the move, and sent me an air kiss, before leaping into a crowd of purple coats. Boom I gritted my teeth after looking at her sword skills, to hell with them. I can do better, I frantically swung my katana, while applying the blade strengthening, cries V3CH71, bringing a sword to gunfight under the cover of gunfire and two crazy sword maidens, the assault team made the landfall, the secured battleships were manned, and set sail back home, Atsuki was sent to escort them, while a small team of pirate affiliated purple coats commanded by Emmanuel started a firefight with the defenders. I dashed between covers, mostly to cover for the fact that the bullets are useless against me, and reached Emmanuel. The man was occasionally peeking from behind a rock foundation of a building, and firing his revolver. Bang bang good to see you in one piece. Where are the other two? E. They are having fun. Boom we peeked to see the pillar of dust which was created by another area attack skill. Is your own sword a decoration? He jerked the katana's grip. I was a bit busy with guarding them from behind. Bang 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 after Emmanuel shot a dashing soldier, he started reloading the revolver. While he was doing it, I peeked too. Bang bang everybody took cover, after hearing the nearby shots of cannons. When they stopped covering, and looked around. They saw that those were my shots. I think we already made them fall back far enough. You better go help the ladies, 
I will handle the troops myself. Emmanuel pushed my back to show that I should go. I nodded, and drew the katana. The fifty meters distance of no man's land was crossed in a single leap, and I started shredding the poor souls who were nearby. Cut slash chop pierce when the enemy soldiers shifted their focus to me. The pirates moved closer. Their positions were still not good enough but at least they were advancing. I uh, One of the enemy soldiers drew a saber, and rushed at me. I was going to elegantly cut off his head, and cut his falling body. Ping however, I was a bit slow. The soldier was better at handling sword, than his comrades. He successfully parried me, and even counterattacked several times. Blade strengthening. Cut I managed to strengthen a part of the blade, and the katana cut through the soldier's saber, and then through himself. It was completely because of my good sword skills, not because I applied the force of several hundred tons. I ended up being surrounded from all sides. I was too focused on the duel to notice that I pushed deeper into the enemy formation than I expected I would. Almost a hundred rifles were aimed at me. Boo 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 bum boo 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 bum boo 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 bum the machine guns and auto cannons fired in all directions, turning the infantry into a mishmash of torn apart corpses and bloody mist. While the enemy was shell shocked, I pushed even deeper, towards the sound of gunfire, and clashing steel. I ran into a barricade of infantry. The purple coats set up a firing line of three rows, and were steadily raining fire at Eureka. The woman was easily avoiding and deflecting the bullets but the enemy was stalling her nonetheless. When I approached closer, the firing line turned around, and started firing at me. Bang 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 I used them for a training. I managed to deflect several bullets but I was too far from Eureka's level. Is that all you've got? Bang 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 ping 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 I immediately started getting hit. Even though I focused on deflecting bullets, I barely managed to do anything. Actually, I was immobilized due to the amount of lead I was receiving. Bang 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 bang, to hell with you. I dashed to a side, and leapt into the line. The front row met me with bayonets and the second row joined them right after they recovered from shock. I drew the divine steel katana, cut 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 slash the entire line of infantry was turned into slices. One of the infantrymen survived. He was crawling back in terror, as I approached. While I was walking towards him to finish him off, Yuriko stopped me. If you are going to be deflecting arrows, better start with single shots. Rise, child. If you value your life, then you know what to do. Yuriko gave me the basic recommendations on training, and continued her way through the town. Emmanuel's forces were pushing forward in the background, while I was trying to deflect the gunshots that the terrified soldier was making in between loading his musket. Soon I may approach Patricia's level. Then, I will be able to win against anybody. V3CH72. New start the Benetian colony was fighting valiantly. Even though the enemy's situation was dire, the purple coats started receiving support from the locals. The deeper the pirates were pushing into the town, the larger was the portion of militia. With a lot of effort the pirate purple coats pushed the enemy into the town's fort, and besieged them. Both sides took huge casualties, and after the initial firefight, when the sides were taking positions, nobody was willing to initiate a new massacre. Bodies littered the streets and the main square of the town. A third of the bodies were on the approaches to the fort. What do you think? Will they surrender? I glanced at the fort from time to time. The sides seized the fighting. Everybody was tired and demotivated. I had a good reason to believe that if I pressure the defenders a bit, they would surrender. They may. However, those soldiers are tired too. Emmanuel looked at the soldiers around. All of them were fighting for the entire day, without resting anywhere but at another line of covers. I left the cover, and stood in everybody's view. I aimed the guns into the air, and fired. Bang 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 while the echo and the dust were settling, the gates of the fort opened. Some purple coats and militiamen cautiously stepped out. 
Some of the pirate troops left their covers too. When those brave souls made sure neither side is going to attack, the fort finally surrendered, the colony was secured, and the captured purple coats were let go. All of them remained in the town, and agreed to help maintaining the security. There were no looting and no violence. There was nothing to take here. The citizens were tired of Benizio, and with them recognizing our forces as a new alternative government, the chances of the pirates increased. I was wondering, if those people are actually a worthy force when they claim themselves to be rebels, I at most expected them to be a rebel, fighting against the state. Emmanuel was looking at the sea. Then, now you're going to say we are the good guys? No. I just estimate those people to be a force worthy of the Emperor's attention. Maybe the commanding officer of the fleet will agree to my assessment, and help them overthrow their central government. Then, he murmured something in his language. He lifted his eyes at me. I will try to put in a word for the pirates. However, do not expect me to do a miracle. E, if this won't work out, then I am here. You underestimate the Empire's fleets. No matter how many ships you sink, ten times more will come back. The man shrugged his shoulders, and looked at a sail ship, approaching the port. It was sailing under Benetian flag but it was a common merchant vessel, so nobody paid extra attention to it. The ship safely docked, and the merchants started unloading the hold. I was just looking at the bustle, since there was nothing to do here. While I was waiting for Atsuki to deliver the prize ships and return, my attention was caught by a man in a suit. He was different from the unshaved dirty ship rats that unloaded crates, and he was different from the unshaved clean ship rats that were shouting at the slow working sailors. The man looked around the port, and ventured into the town. I followed him out of curiosity. The man was exploring the places where the battle took place especially the ones where my guns participated. In the end, I approached him. Hi, what are you looking for? The man stared at me, and his eyes started examining me. Most of the time his gaze was fixated on the katana, and the cat ears. K-H-M. The man feignly coughed, and stretched out his arm. In his hand was a letter. When I accepted the letter, the man lightly bowed and headed straight back to the ship. I opened the envelope to my dear Catkin. I hope this letter will reach you, or else I will have to clean up the intelligence DPT's mess. I really hope to see you again. I remember I owe you a date in a restaurant, don't I? If you wish to see me, and sort out all of the mess we ended up in, I will be waiting for you on the island of San Marco at the next eclipse and for three days afterwards. Sincerely yours and full of love, Veronica Maria di Benizio. I immediately rushed to Patricia. The girl torn the letter to pieces immediately after it ended up in her hands. Don't go. You must never trust this lunatic. P. Come on. Why would she invite me just to fight me? She must have at least some intellect. Just remember, that thing is a crazy, bloodlusting, raving lunatic. With every word Patricia moved closer to me, until her face was pushed into mine. I'll make sure to remember. Four sisters no forty. When I was talking to some of the girls in our class, I was invited to a tea party. There was only one issue. I was asked to bring one more person with me. Usually when I hang out, I invite one of my sisters but today it is not an option. Mo is blasting some monsters far away. Iwu is on a few deadlines. The only option would be the freak. If it was not a noble tea party which consists of girls. To make matters worse, I became Iowa. I missed all of the opportunities to invite anybody aside from my sisters. And if I don't bring anybody. Then the girls will start think poorly of me, and then they will forget about Mandesit hat I am not a good friend and will never talk to him again. What a nice way of saying, Big Sis Angie, please, be my knight for tonight's tea party. NJ, as if I would say something like that. I can always aim the MK7s at her, if she starts doing freak things. You are the luckiest little sister in the world. 
I just happen to have nothing important to do, so. NJ, was there a second when you were doing anything useful? I might as well go and help you out Tilda, you only need to say, I love New Jersey apostrophe Tilda. NJ, I love the city of New Jersey, now stop fooling around, and let's go. I made sure to convey the point that the freak will become a cheese head, if she tries something stupid. We entered the club, and right at the doorstep we were met by my friends, as expected of Miss Wisconsin. You managed to bring the right person. Somehow, everybody appeared to be delighted to see the freakiest trash in the world. The freakiest trash was delighted too. My my, you were waiting for me Tilda? He he he. The filthy hand that creeped towards the skirt was stopped by putting the 16-gun barrel against the back of the freak's head. I kept watch of the new jerksy's activities. Even that did not stop me from having some fun. The girls were cheerfully chatting with me. They were asking me all sorts of questions, bringing me the best sweets, and just hanging out near me. That is what happiness looks like. Stop right there, criminal scum. That's better. Who does she think she is? She must stay somewhere far away, and be shunned by everybody. Only I can hang out with her. The tea party was approaching its end. All of the social circles intermingled, and all the ladies greeted each other, and exchanged gossips. While the ladies were finishing their tea, and waited for the hostess signal to leave, one of my friends approached me, and introduced me to a daughter of a powerful family. That was my silliest mistake ever, ding 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 I heard somebody tap on a cup. When I turned around, I almost fired the super heavy shells, the freak entered the middle of the room, and was suspiciously cheerful, since I was kept here for the entire evening. How about you show me your panties Tilda? I will, murder you, I said with my glare, the freak only grinned. Stop right there. Before I stopped her. The freak made her move. Iowa class secret technique. Area skirt flipping. NJ, boom a quarter charge of cordite, fired precisely in the middle of the crowd. It was an assured kill. Kiowa. Click 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 while the skirts were fluttering, New Jersey took as many photos as she could. You are the worst kind of trash. The freak smiled. It was all worth it Tilda. NJ. It surely was all worth it. One of the girls declared. Question mark and J. We may have sacrificed our honor. But we protected her highness, the foreign princess. Honor instead. All of the girls started nodding. Question mark and J. While you are here, her highness successfully explored the academy. And she was not dishonored by the likes of you. Doubly well, it was worth it in the end. Hey, come here. The freak beckoned the girl to come closer, and she did it. Hey, is this the princess you're talking about? NJ, yes. The girl said with pride. The freak swiped the phone's screen, and the girl paled. What is going on? Everyone was confused. Then, the freak showed the screen. You, you are the lowest of lowlifes. You are the most disgusting of cockroaches. Just die, you freak. Boom 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 V3 CH73. An empty place among the lights of Night City for an entire week I had to study the maps. The island of San Marco was found within the first hour of search, and the course was plotted within the second hour. My only reason for staying in the newly taken colony was because Atsuki was sailing at an astonishing speed of four knots. She needed six days to reach the base, and one day to return here. With the ship's arrival I left my companions to board the second pennant, and set course to rendezvous with the most dangerous being I currently know. I should have enough time to reach San Marco by the eclipse. From Patricia's explanation I know that the island is considered a resort for the richest of people, the old nobility, the heads of merchant corporations, and businessmen with enough money to buy town. Such people all gather at the island to spend their money and form new connections. The Las Vegas of Renaissance was going to be my hardest mission. Or so I thought. Even when I sailed right at the front door, 
The ships around me did not care. Even the frigates that patrolled the port did not even try blocking my way. Without a single obstacle I docked at the port and safely disembarked. The actual hardest part was not infiltrating the port but searching for Veronica. The night city was bustling with life. The insomniac city was hard to navigate. I had to ask everybody I could to tell me where I can find the restaurants. Just after seeing that I am a catkin, I was shunned. At most I was told a general direction. I was directed everywhere, and the directions were often contradicting each other. Thanks to Veronica's precise information, I had no idea where I need to go. Out of desperation I approached another patrolman and acted all cute and flirty, until the man paid me attention. Can you tell me where the restaurants are? I had an appointment. Why would you need a restaurant? They all are closed tonight. He was dumbfounded. All of them? Should be all. Tonight is going to be an eclipse. Nobody is going to skip such a rare event. He looked like he was stating something obvious. Are there any chances that one of the restaurants is opened? W well. The man looked away. I immediately snuggled closer, and purred. He automatically patted my head. There was one but. I continued snuggling, breaking through his last defenses. But it is reserved by the radiant sun. In a split second I grabbed his coat. Where is it? Facing my enthusiastic response, the patrolman pointed somewhere, and I rushed there. I spent another hour wandering around in search until I finally found a one-story building with large glass windows. It was the only restaurant where the lights were on. When I cautiously peeked inside, the head waiter glanced at me. His expressions changed from curiosity to disgust, anger, and finally to amiability, as he hurried to open the doors for me, and babbled about how the restaurant is honored to have me eat here, while he was leading me to a table somewhere in the far corner. The restaurant was obviously closed. The tables were covered with cloth, and all the chandeliers and spices were taken away. The few waiters that remained on duty were enviously looking outside. Only the table at the furthest corner had candles lit. A single person with blonde hair was sitting there. When we approached closer, I saw that Veronica was reading a book. Hello. The girl shifted her attention to me. Kuranami, what a rare sight. Bring in the dishes. The girl closed the book, and pushed away the head waiter. She helped me sit down, and after she returned to her seat, she stared at me. At first I was seeing her smile with her eyes. Then I started feeling weird, and by the time the waiters started bringing the dishes, I had goosebumps from the girl's attentive stare. Your menu, signorina. A waiter silently waited for me to decide and threw occasional glances at Veronica. V3CH74. The snake sten I chose several dishes, and Veronica smiled. To think you would eat so little Tilda? V, ha? Huh? I had a lot of time to study you Tilda. Didn't I Tilda? V, I am not the richest person. I hoped that the excuse would work. You really think you are allowed to pay for yourself tonight Tilda? It would be my honor to spoon feed you their entire stock tilde. V, I reluctantly ordered a few dishes more. We have a lot of things to talk about. For example, why you invited me. After I sat straight, Veronica stopped gazing, and straightened too. I heard something about the West. V, just how much do you know? I know everything, up until the point you invited a fleet. The girl waved a stack of files. All of them had a print secretissimo. You are something. Having ears everywhere is my forte, or, maybe the forte of the entire Benetian government. She giggled, and threw the stack to my side of the table. And you perfectly knew where your mother was? The girl's expression turned grim. Don't call her like that. Ever. V. Birds of a feather. Patricia and Veronica are so similar in the fact that they hate their family. That person. Why do you hate her? Why do you care? Veronica's eyes turned dull, and she started twitching. Hey, easy there. I started calming her down, before she reached for the rapier. Veronica groaned, and hugged her legs. 
if only. V, seeing that the girl was unstable. I tried to spoon feed her some chicken. Veronica's gaze was unfocused but she swallowed the chicken. A few moments later she stopped dreading the waiters, who were crossing themselves by the emergency exit. When we all thought that she finally calmed down, I saw that her eyes were dull. Like the last time I saw her, I immediately started spoon feeding her more food, hoping that Veronica will calm down completely. The girl's jaw was the only thing that moved. I did not dare breaking the eye contact. Even though I know she's ridiculously up, it is scarier to be under such a gaze, than to be at the hair's width away from death. When I was about to faint from terror, the girl's eyes regained their focus. MMM Tilda. Veronica smiled. As if nothing happened, by that time the waiters were all trembling and hugging each other in relief. When I looked back at Veronica, I saw that she was displeased. Don't look at the others while I'm here Tilda. I fervently nodded, and continued spoon feeding her. Soon Veronica started telling me some gossips from the city of Benizio, asking me about my life with the pirates, and all sorts of stuff which has nothing to do with the war. This snake is up to something, Patricia's teachings were emerging here and there but I was more or less inclined towards talking to Veronica. The more I talked to her, the more she was smiling. I gathered the remaining cat's courage to ask her about the family, why you and Patricia are not friends? Veronica frowned, does it have something to do with you? V, you said that you're fine with her being by my side but, why are you so hostile towards each other? When did I say something like this? Veronica shrugged her shoulders. Let me reformulate that. You like Patricia more than my other companion? Veronica frowned even more. A long time ago we were on better terms. Then the Tess ran away. Veronica grumbled, and threw me a glare, meaning don't pry further. Which? A. Uh, S. A certainer. Veronica's mood was close to hitting the bottom. Do you have an idea why the A ran away? Who knows? Veronica tapped on her forehead, and turned away from me. She gestured for the head waiter to come, and started interrogating him on where the hell is my little kitten's appetizer. When the girl turned back to me, I raised my hand to show that I still have questions. But Veronica smiled, smiled with her eye twitching. Four sisters no 41. As this school year was approaching its end, the entire academy started searching for a good way to obtain good marks. One of the ways is to study hard. Let's be honest, everybody, it's not an option, especially for the nobles. The second way is to write a short 1000 page research. Big Sis is already occupying the library, so for most people it will be hard to challenge her authority as the master of doing everything late but somehow managing to succeed. The third option is to be a noble offspring with a rank of no less than a Marquis. The last option is to have good marks already but it is only for the chosen ones, who wasted their lives studying during the year. Of course, there is another option for those who fail to do either of those. Not only the ones who succeed will get good marks for the entire duration of their studying. They will also gain a personal dukedom, a princess, a million gold coins, and the king will personally kiss their feet. You just need to kill the demon king. I was riding a carriage with some of the people, who think it will be an easy feat. How did you end up here? I asked a muscular man with tattoos all over him. They asked me, either you go and try subjugating the demon king, or the gallows will be waiting for you tomorrow. Then I asked a suspicious man, who hid his face under a hood. They said that if I managed to kill it, they will pardon all of my feats. And finally I asked a skinny guy who was shaking. I. I just tried to steal a horse. Hey, what village are you from? Horse thief. Does it even matter? The man looked at me with ridicule. You botched such a nice conversation. Then what about you? Gal, what brings you here? The muscular man asked. Me? I just had nothing to do and so as not to bother my sisters while they are preparing for the exams, I went for a ride. Everyone looked at me, like I'm crazy. 
You're joking, right? That. That's a nice one. The had tried joking but the conversation was not going anywhere. The next day we arrived to a huge camp in front of the Gothic castle's drawbridge. There were a lot of adventurers and other armed people, all sorts of people, aside from the royal knights. After we ate, the entire crowd of armed musleheads was herded to the drawbridge. It was lowered, and everybody rushed at a crowd of demon soldiers. A tough battle began. While everyone was busy, our small strike team sneaked past, and infiltrated inside the demon king's castle. We scared away a bunch of imps, and finally reached the throne room. We entered a huge black room at the end of which was sitting the demon king. In one hand he was holding a human skull, in the other he had a human bone, which he used as a toothpick. Ah! It is a back comb. The men prepared to fight. So did I tremble before me, for I am the great fire demon. What's up with those looks of disappointment, guys? The demon king was not moved to. He glanced at an imp who was by his side. Is she the one? The imp nodded. The demon king stood up. Finally, a worthy opponent. Come at me. DK, prepare yourself, for we shall bout fair and square. While I was thinking on what incantation I should use, the demon king picked a chessboard from behind the throne. M. Mercy. Were you not the one who wished for a fair fight? Tilda? DK, ten minutes later. It doesn't count. The lighting is too dark. Seven minutes later. It doesn't count. My shoulders are stiff. Five minutes later. IT doesn't count. IT doesn't. Fine, fine. The demon king put all figures back on the board. One minute later. Checkmate. DK, it. Face it. DK, well. Just face it. DK, still. Far. DK, your majesty, the playtime is over, please, return to your duties. A demon maid picked up the board, and left. Well, see you during the next subjugation, then? The demon king gave me a handshake, and walked away. The four of us wobbled out of the castle with stupefied expressions. When we walked outside, we saw that the allies were all defeated, and the imps were picking up the scattered chess pieces, and giving the defeated some consolation prizes. I shall return, you hear me? I shall return, and win. I threatened the demon king, and walked away with my head held high. V3CH75 the state of emergency I continued dining with Veronica in silence. Through the windows of the restaurant I could barely see the eclipse. The waiters were keeping distance, and only approached to bring new dishes, or to clean the table. Everything was silent around us, as if it was respecting the atmosphere. The only sound that was breaking this eerie silence was coming from the utensils colliding. The girl was mad at me for quite some time but suddenly I had a spoon of salad in front of me. Veronica turned her head away. Playing hard to get Tilda? V. It darky miss you Tilda. I gulped the salad, and tried to give her a spoon of a liver I was eating. Veronica pushed the spoon away, and grumbled. Whatever, that should be more for me then. The girl was either full already, or was too mad at me. My own mood to eat was already gone, so I started looking through the files. You guys. I had no words. After a single glance through, I learned more about what was going on, than I knew. And I am one of the main actors of this circus. The exact amount of ships the pirates have. The smuggling routes. The pirate patrols. The estimated construction of the renovated black demon. The estimated construction of the western ship. They even knew how many soldiers the pirates have deployed all over our small territory. It was a sobering read. It helped me cool my head before I read the last file. The planned attack of the last fleet Benizio has accumulated. When I looked at Veronica, the girl looked at me, as if saying any questions. The Ice Queen received a firm negative. Just the fact that everything is known should help us a lot. Veronica kept on looking at me, waiting for me to finish. I lost all of my appetite, and returned the files. Without saying a word, the girl stood up, and led me somewhere. As it turned out, 
We were heading to the port. I headed to the ship, and in front of the ramp I decided to wave her goodbye. When I turned around, Veronica had the rapier aimed at me. Seriously? All hospitality comes at a price. I subdued the screams I had, and asked the puppeteer. You invited me? No, uh, thanks for everything. I'll be going then. Do not hurry, Veronica started approaching. With every step my back was feeling colder. Remember, you must protect this vessel. With your life included, as she continued approaching, my tail glued itself to my belly. What do you mean? There can be no different interpretation. The girl's short steps were bringing her closer. Why? Why must it be me? Because, I said so, Pierce when she was in six steps, she flashed at me. The last thing I saw was the guard of the rapier in front of my face. Ga? R? R? K H A K H A K H A. I woke up on the ship. It was already morning, and San Marco's port was busy. There was a small queue of ships at the roadstead. I undocked and set sail away from this accursed place. Usually I would steam at 20 to 25 knots but this time I have an urgent information. I set full speed ahead at 35 knots. When I returned to the pirate main base, I was relieved. The Benetian fleet was yet to arrive. The destroyer squadron was safely continuing to monitor the surroundings. When I docked, I immediately headed to Alba. The woman met me immediately. She was sitting at an armchair. Emmanuel and Eureka were playing chess at a table nearby. Patricia was making tea. Patricia was about to go greet me but I went straight to Alba. They know everything about us. Alba blinked a few times. PFFT. She barely tried to suppress the laughing. You silly girl. You only found that out? Alba said between the laughs. I have no idea why it's funny. You can't keep the spies away forever but you can try feeding them lies too. Whatever that fool knows. We took some measures to lower the impact. Is that everything? The woman calmed down. They are going to send their remaining fleet. Remind me to thank Veronica, before knocking her brain out of head. Alba chuckled, and glanced at Emmanuel. Everything now is up to the Western Fleet's arrival. Announcement what will happen to Veronica will depend on the answers in the polls. V3CH76. The Squire initiation the pirates were preparing for the coming fight. With only six operational battleships and a floating battery, the chances of winning against a strong group of ships are negligible. Even with my squadron's help the chances are not in the pirates' favor. Five destroyers can provide a lot of damage from a long range, however, the amount of ships we can fight at once is still limited. Not to mention, if Veronica shows up, we are doomed. She can poke holes in my hull, and I am yet to see any of skills of hers. She can keep my squadron busy just by herself, maybe. While we have a break, I went to Eureka. If she can teach me swordsmanship, I may be able to fight Veronica when the time comes. How are you doing? I entered the cabin she occupied for meditation. What is it you need, doll? Why, teach me swordsmanship? Eureka frowned. Are you sure? The other child might be better to start with. Why, come on. You saw that I know how to swing a sword. Plus, Patricia is not on the same level as you are. Exactly for this reason, you better start with her, than with me. In the end, Eureka was so stubborn, that I had to go find Patricia. Unlike the ancient hag, the girl's eyes sparkle just from hearing the word spa. Come at me. Patricia grinned, and waved the sword to beckon me. As you wish. Clang, I immediately started attacking. Patricia barely stopped my strikes, and was pushed back further and further. Ping after I slashed from above, Patricia had to sit on her knee to keep balance. While our swords were clashed, the girl smiled. Oh, damn it. Here we go again. Patricia pushed away my sword, and started attacking. At best I was managing to deflect her strikes. When I evaded the pommel strike, I aimed at the girl's legs. I won. Nothing happened. The katana did not reach Patricia's legs. I glanced at the blade, and saw that it was stopped by the same pommel. 
I started sweating buckets, I won. She chirped into my ear, the long sword was a centimeter away from my neck, ha ha ha, don't mess with me, I am times better than you are. I applauded, and waited for a moment to ask her to train me, after all, for some time she will be showing off. When Patricia got satisfied with inflating her ego, I approached. So, will you teach me? I need to become stronger. Becoming stronger is the only way. Tilda, let's start Tilda. P. Ping you could have at least warned me. Shut up and fight. P. By the end of the evening I felt like I am a goo. Cats are liquid, and I became very flexible myself but not to the point of being a puddle, the results were yet to be seen, so I will continue training for a long time, since there was some time until I go to sleep, I decided to walk around the port, while I was wandering around aimlessly, I saw the navigation light on ferry, I facepmed, and checked the stats, I could have produced torpedoes for a week, if not for a month, ding you received 450 upgrade points, 7 copper coins, 9 silver coins, 4 gold coins IJN Kirin Army, DDL, upgrade points, 0, torpedoes, 0 15, HP, 3700, high minus 100%, AU 100%, 3000 nanometers, 5 dual turrets full upgrade, 24 quintuple torpedo mount, oxygen torpedo storage I, 226 one thousandths. I better call Fairy, before I waste the platinum coin on something useless. Fairy, commence torpedo production. Supply depot active. Dry dock no orders. Production facility time until next torpedo, 23 59 and 44 seconds. Don't forget to pay the bill for your supplies. I only received a radio message from since do I owe you for the supplies? I shouted at the mobile base, from the moment you abused me. Fairy shouted back, I wonder if receiving a huge shipment of steel will make her forgive me. I went to Alba, to negotiate a large unexpected supply of steel for my nurse. Even though this week was very intense, now I at least have a constant supply of torpedoes. V3CH77 the Grand Fleet a few days have passed since I started the torpedo production. I managed to gather almost 20 tons of steel for Fairy, and although she kept on grumbling, she appears to be somewhat soothed. At least she withdrew the bills for fuel and maintenance of a boiler. While I was training with Patricia, I received a report. Radar contact detected. One of the destroyers found a large group of ships on approach. Ping wait. No waiting. P. I said wait. I blocked Patricia's sword with my palm, and contacted the other destroyers to regroup on me, while Patricia was staring dumbfounded at my palm. I slipped from under her sword. The training is over for now. We have ships approaching. You go to the ship, I will search for a manual. No doubt he is somewhere in the improvised HQ. Just when I stepped into the mansion, I saw him. Emmanuel was having a heated debate with the purple coats. Something about you imbeciles. The ships are not supposed to be sailed like this. Emmanuel, how about you postpone this discussion? We have a large group of ships approaching. The man glanced at me, and nodded to the purple coats. They wordlessly reached a consensus, and Emmanuel approached me, while we were jogging to the harbor. We had some time to talk. Where from do they approach? E. The ships should be coming from the western perimeter. There were no reports of smoke, so they should be pretty far. Or, he supposed, it is hard to be sure. That is why we are sailing out. In case it is our fleet, they were warned about you having the only steam powered ships out here. E. Thanks. We boarded the destroyer, and after the ship was undocked and unplugged from ferry, I set course out of the harbor. Atsuki. Yuki, Harutsuki, and Hanezuki were already idling by the roadstead. When I steamed out, the squadron formed line ahead, and accelerated to catch up with me. We sailed around the island, and set course to the open sea. 
We were already halfway to the point where the radar contact was received but the radar was silent. There were no contacts, which is suspicious. No matter how fast we regrouped, the ships would have enough time to sail all the way here. When we reached the patrol route of the western perimeter, I started to wonder where the hell could the ships disappear. I set course back to the island, this time towards the other side of it. There was simply nothing on the detection equipment. Only when we reached the island, I saw that we were fooled. The pirates were fighting against a large group of Benetian vessels. A part of them matched the information I received from the squadron. Those were caravels, fast and hard to track ships. We were lured out, and the main fleet hit the unprotected island. It was not a small raid. The enemy had the clear naval superiority. Battleships. The squadron turned after me. When all of the guns were aimed, we opened fire. Bang 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 I decided that the first to be taken down should be the squadron of light ships. Their maneuverability is a pain in the lower back but they are also the closest to us. The Benetians had a lot of time to adapt to my tactics, so the light ships started maneuvering immediately breaking the aim. Bang 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 a he shell hit the stern of a caravel. The sailors started abandoning the vessel. Bang 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 at best we could shake the swarm of light vessels off the pirate main fleet. When we managed to scare off the caravels, I saw a large number of contacts on approach. The group was twice as large as the current attacking force the pirates faced. Those guys went all out. Emmanuel, Patricia, and I stared at the surface detection radar screen. Our defeat was only the matter of time. All pennants, prepare for torpedo attack, narrow spread, low speed. Splash four sisters no 42 the end is nigh. If not for Mo's everyday reminder that I am running out of time, and I have to write just an entire thousand of pages, I would think that I still have time to do it later. After I chose the subject for my work. I warded an entire section of the library, and started working. I set up a deck chair from the pool, and set up a makeshift bed. I put an entire stock of food into a magical freezer. I stacked a little less than 500 books around the desk, and then I started living in the library. At first I was receiving glances of surprise but as the time went on, everybody just accepted me as the part of the background. I was brainstorming a thesis for my research, when I was contacted by Mo. How is your work going? You remember that the time is limited? Mo, yes, yes. I already wrote 10 pages. That's the spirit. You just need 990 more. You know, I wanted to ask you a favor. Mo, what is it? Can you lend me a hand during the next subjugation? That guy was too tough for me alone. I sighed, and brainstormed for an excuse to refuse this. Let's talk about it later. Sure thing. Mo, after she reminded me about my never-ending work, I was once again demotivated. Yet I continued. Several hours later I proudly looked at the results of my hard work. At an entire page of nonsense. Ha. Huh. I lied on the desk, and looked at the freezer. Some beer would surely help me cool down the brain. While I was contemplating drinking the cold beer, I felt something dive under my skirt. Engie? No, it's not her style. She would already make it clear it's her. Also, she wouldn't just try hiding there and shivering. I jumped back, and saw that the one who hid under my skirt was the crown prince. He looked apologetic but before I could ask what is going on, the doors of the library opened and the platinum blonde showed up. May I request Miss Iowa's assistance here? The sheer amount of materials the lady prepared is a bit. He showed the thickness of the materials, and I understood that the poor boy requires a guardian angel, or rather an archangel, since I am a background object. The platinum blonde passed by me without sparing a glance. The blue-haired girl glanced at me but immediately followed the blonde. After coursing around for a while, the blonde left the library, his highness finally left the safe zone, and sat down on a chair by my side. Many thanks. Would it be alright with miss, if I stayed at the desk, and studied? CP. Of course. 
Do you need reference materials? Feel free to take whatever you need. I pointed at the stacks of books. He quietly picked a few books, and started reading them. I almost finished writing a page when I heard a voice. Do remember to write it down in the workbook. The voice was feminine but when I looked around I didn't see anybody. Seeing my puzzlement, the crown prince leaned closer, and pointed at a bookshelf nearby. From behind it peeked the blue-haired girl, and disappeared the next moment. And here I thought I am the ultimate background object. I didn't even notice her presence until now. One moment. The crown prince stood up and approached the girl. She whispered him something and passed a cart full of books. Then she bowed, and left. May I ask what happened? The miss picked everything I may need to study. Also, she asked for your cooperation. Please, tutor me if necessary. I nodded, and we dived back into our respective works. By the evening the crown prince almost finished everything. The platinum blonde entered the library and headed towards my desk. Good. You there. If you can keep up with his highness program, I will let you tutor him. If you fail to do so. She showed the cutthroat gesture, and the crown prince paled. The girl turned around, and started walking away. Only then I saw her entourage, who immediately disappeared behind the blonde. Four sisters no 43. While the academy was enveloped in hysteria. I was fooling around. Since I am the best in terms of abilities, I already prepared for all of the exams and can do all sorts of silly stuff. There is an exception of Iowa, whom nobody dares to touch right now, as she slowly goes crazy from writing. Other than that, I am free to do whatever I want. My optimistic expectations of touring the academy and lifting skirts along the way were shattered by the unexpected issue. There are no people outside. Everyone is either studying, or has already bought their way out of the exams and returned home. Once again, if not for Iowa, the three of us would have said no, and fool around all the summer but we just had to let our mouths loose. A Vietnam flashback. So, I think we better to set up a barbecue party afterwards. We- You're a devil in a sheep's hide, Whiskey. Think about it. The entire academy will have to drown in saliva while they write the exams. Aren't you the evil one? Whatever you say. We worked hard, and now it's time to reap the benefits. We- God shall reward us for our hard work during the semester Tilda. A good old beefsteak sounds good to me Tilda. Mo, we were happily discussing our plans for the summer, and didn't notice how a shadow loomed behind us. The God shall surely reward you all Tilda. Especially after you submit your examination papers Tilda. Together with me Tilda. Iowa was smiling radiantly. The fact that we couldn't slime our way out of taking part in exams was now evident. Those who don't work hard don't get their steaks roasted. We just needed not to show that we are going to skip and enjoy our time. Just asked this much. We just needed to inform the teachers a day prior that we are not going to show up at the exams, and then go radio silent and mere for a day. Just this much. I was going to vent out my frustration by flipping skirts and enjoying others' frustration but now I can't do even that much. Whiskey is having those days, and will kill me for real, should I anger her a tiny bit. Mo is wheeling around the kingdom in search for adventures on her butt and Iowa will weep if I do anything to her. End of block 5